What is up everyone and welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral, non-partisan platform welcoming everyone from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more fantastic debates, we are all over the internet, including your favorite podcasting platform. So if you enjoy debates, please don't forget to like, follow on Twitch, or subscribe on YouTube. Or hey, TikTok is almost at a thousand, including tonight's debate on Are Men Ignored slash Unappreciated Today with our debaters, Andrew and Rachel, and Radical Coder, and Ashley, here to help us find out. And if you enjoy what any of them have to say tonight, our guest links are in the description below. You can also tag me in chat at Amy Newman with your question, comment, for our Q&A section, those Super Chats will get yours sent to the top of the list. But with that, we are going to hand it over to the affirmative for their opening statements. The floor is all yours. And you may have to unmute. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. All right. So I'll, I'll jump right into this. Uh, Radical Coder, you're gay, by the way. Uh, so are men treated like shit in society? This is the question. Uh, unequivocally, the answer is yes. Before I get into all the reasons that's true, let me tell you what my opponents will argue, which can be only one of two things. It'll be either be A, yes, men are treated like crap in society, but that's due to men being in charge. And it's secretly the patriarchy, which is instilling an oppressive system designed to treat men poorly. And so we should all be feminists so that men get treated better. Or option two, yes, but they deserve it because they were oppressive to the poor women's for 200 billion years and they're getting their just comeuppance. Ultimately, though, I think they will concede in the opening, thus maintaining our 100% perfect tally on modern day debate of our opponents conceding the position before the debate even starts. So where to begin? Let's start with women pretending to be minorities, even though they are actually a majority. Yes, friends, women outnumber men, yet somehow still have done a bait and switch where they pretend they are somehow a minority who deserves to be protected from what you ask, basically from men hurting their fifis. Yes, be nice is the creed of the modern woman. Women get lighter prison sentences for the same crimes or favored in divorces. They initiate most divorces, even though they are still favored in them. Schools are tailored to their needs, which is why they do better academically. The list goes on and on and on. And we have an exhaustive list of stats with us. Let me also remind everybody that men not only are totally benevolent, and don't deserve the scathing wrath of horrible harping women treating us all horribly because they are entitled snotty brats. But I can demonstrate this benevolency of men using the Thanos technique. If men decided with a snap of their fingers tomorrow that all women were to be enslaved, then they would be. All they could really do is whine a lot and beg and plead, and that's about it. However, if women decided men were to be enslaved tomorrow... We would scoff, and again, all they could do is whine and complain. The reason women are allowed to get away with their shitty behavior is because of simps who enable them to do so. They do this in hopes a woman somewhere will breed with them, but they won't because women are too busy, according to the stats, breeding with men who treat them like something they scraped off the corner of the mouth this morning and threw it in a trash can. Men's benevolent and good nature can't be overstated all of society is run due to us being awesome and we do all of this despite incessant complaining from women who mostly hold office jobs are waitresses and fill up the service industry in general because a real job would literally kill them we do all of this for all of society and we're treated like rapists orchestrators of violence 
evildoers, and generally taught that masculinity in and of itself is a trait to be mocked and scorned rather than adhered to. It's a disgusting society we live in that holds these virtues, and we're here tonight to prove that, of course, men are treated horribly, like garbage. Nobody cares about men, not even other men. The expectation of society is that men fix their own problems and everybody else's too, chiefly women's, and that's my opening. Thank you. All right, so I guess it's my turn. Um, Some of you guys in the chat theorized that maybe Andrew was being facetious. I can assure you that he is not. Uh, That's just his style. He's very straightforward. Um, I'm going to completely agree with him and not only agree with him, but back his play here. Um, I did write a book on the subject as well, not to like flex on you guys. (laughs) Um, But what Andrew said is true. Uh, And where this comes from is that prior to women's liberation, we had a balance of power where men had the monopoly on force, women had the monopoly on reproduction. Women were the gatekeepers of reproduction. Each of you watching this has twice as many female ancestors as you do male ancestors. Women, all they have to do to be able to reproduce is be female and be fertile. Men, in order to reproduce, historically have had to um, fight their way up the hierarchy. They've had to have resources. They've had to prove themselves good providers, good protectors, things of that nature. Um, And what happened when uh, we did the whole female liberation shtick was that we flipped the balance of power. So now women not only have a monopoly on reproductive uh, power, but they also have political power. They have financial power and they have social power. So now uh, we have three and a half times more men committing suicide than women. We have, uh, like Andrew said, much stiffer, harsher sentences that men receive for the exact same crimes as women. We have uh, young boys who don't do well in school. school. Public school systems are completely skewed in favor of girls and girls' behavior, and boys are expected to behave like girls. This is mostly due to the fact that about 90% of school teachers in K-12 through schools are women. And uh, now college degrees are about 77% of them are, are, are earned by women. So women have social power, they have financial power, about 80% of every consumer dollar in the United States is controlled by women. So all the marketing is geared toward women, all the entertainment is geared toward women. The highest earning entertainer of 2020 was Kylie Jenner. She doubled the next closest man on the list, who was Kanye West. Um, Women have tremendous amounts of power and men have almost none. The family court system is skewed very much in favor of women, although that's changing a little bit because there are some good men's activism groups working on that. It's pretty indisputable that women are worshipped and praised and treated with a lot of bias and men are kind of treated as expendable and uh, like they can just be thrown away. And the reason for this is because now we have an industrial technological society that gives us this false illusion that women can do everything men can do. However, the average CEO boss bitch gets up in the morning in her condo or her apartment or her house that was designed and built by a man. Uh, She gets in her car that was designed and built by a man. She drives to her office building that was designed and built by a man on roads that were designed and built by men. And if she gets to her corner office and her computer doesn't work, she calls a man and he comes and fixes it. And then she uses a program at work that she was trained to use that was designed by men, most likely, uh, to do whatever job it is that she does. And as Andrew said, if you look at the careers of women in this country from 1920 to 2020, that's a hundred year span, they're almost exactly the same. The only thing is we swapped uh, farm labor for HR work basically. And the rest is secretaries, daycare workers, nurses, um, administrative assistants, cooks, uh, waitresses, things of that nature. So it's, it's really like an illusion of female power without anything to back it up. The only reason this exists is because men allow it. And the only reason men allow it is because they felt like the sexual revolution was a good deal for them. Turns out that unattached sex with no responsibility is actually quite a huge liability for men and not 
not something that was in their favor. So I think we have a pretty good case here and I'm interested to see what the other side has to say. Thank you so very much for both of our interlocutors on the affirmative side. <laughs> Sounds like a cat. And with that, we are going to hand it over to the negative side. The floor is all yours. Ryan, did you want to start us off? Uh, sure. Um, so I guess I'll start out. Uh, I, I, I did think it was interesting at the outset that uh, it was when we were asked to do this debate that it was kind of implicit that we would take the no position. I don't I, I don't have a, a solid answer on this question. I don't really know entirely yet how to engage with the question. I, I wrote down a bunch of notes during that uh, um, during that. So, you know, we'll, we'll walk through this. I think the first the first question I have is like, which men are we talking about and by whom are they underappreciated? Um, I would say that, like, it depends on the context a lot. Um, uh, like we could argue in a lot of cases that men are underappreciated by other men. Uh, we can argue they are underappreciated by, if, but like this, this whole like gender warfare thing is really boring to me. So I, I'd like to be like way more specific, um, when we're talking about these things, maybe we can, uh, we can kind of hammer a lot of that down, um, as we go through. Um, that, that's kind of my, my biggest, uh, my, my biggest, uh, point of contention with like the whole framing here. Uh, last, last time I was on, I, uh, I did challenge James to a debate about, uh, whether or not modern day debate is actually a neutral platform. So, uh, maybe eventually I can, uh, I can follow up with that. Um, uh, because I, I think, I think it's interesting that, that Andrew says, oh, they always concede the point or whatever. Uh, I think last time something like that happened. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I think maybe the framing of the questions might have something to do with, with why it's so easy, um, for Andrew. To, uh, it's kind of a vacuous question, really are men underappreciated? Like, we just have to be way more specific about this. Underappreciated in what ways, by whom, um, uh, all of these are, are, are really big. Uh, th like, it's just, without without answering these questions, we can't even begin to have the conversation. So uh, I guess that's um, really where I'd like to start going. Um, but uh, I'll let Ashley uh, give her perspective on things from for now. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Ryan. I was kind of, I, I was kind of um, amused when Andrew said, oh, they're going to concede before it even starts. Because like you, I was just sent an email asking if I wanted to debate our men underappreciated. And the funny thing is, is that a majority of my content is about how men are underappreciated mm -hmm. <laughs> in a lot of these ways. Um, but if I'm going to argue any points, I would say, um, yes, you are right, Rachel. Uh, men's suicide rates, successful suicide rates, much higher than women. Um, but if you look at it statistically, the same statistics you're looking at, it's actually suicide attempts and thoughts of suicide are predominantly female. It's just method of suicide. Uh, men tend to, to do suicide by hanging, carbon monoxide poisoning, or firearms, while women tend to go for uh, like medication. They, they over-medicate to try to uh, off themselves. And the thing with that is that it, you're more likely to be found before the suicide attempt um, has been successful, quote unquote, if you want to call it that. So just to clarify that that little point, um, I, I but it is interesting. It is interesting. Um, also, the highest rate of suicides, it would be in America anyways, would be what What was it, Ryan? I said middle-aged white males. Yeah, middle-aged women. Yeah, middle-aged white males. Um, and then um, another thing that I thought was really interesting, we're talking about, you guys were talking about the schools, right? And how um, education is catered primarily towards females. I don't know how much I agree with catered towards females, but I do know that the rates of female college graduates are uh, well outnumbering male college graduates, you know, um, that I'll agree with you on. Um, another interesting statistic I looked up earlier was like, I think, what was it in the span of between, in, in one year from like 2021 to 2022, female CEOs went from like 17% up to 30% in one year. Cause that was a point I brought up to Ryan. I said, I wonder if that number is going to change, you know, in five years, 10 years, 30 years down the road, if we're having more female college graduates than males, then wouldn't one assume we'd have more, you know, female CEOs in the, in the future than male. Um, so that's another interesting um, thing. And then one thing you said, Rachel, that I can, I can agree with, but maybe, maybe we'll have a slightly different opinion on, um, even though we agree, but kind of different, you know, is that um, you were saying that, oh, you know, I kind of like the way you worded it actually, like, who know who would guess, you know, unattached, you know, just sex, you know, without any consequences, like wouldn't be good for you, you know, I will agree with you that I, th I think that um, the traditional role of family, you know, uh, husband, wife, you know, son, daughter, etc, has kind of 
I don't, I don't know if it's gone out the window, but it's definitely, definitely largely perverted, one might say, from what it used to be, for lack of a better adjective maybe to use there. Um, but I also think that, like, one thing Andrew said, too, like, it's breeding this kind of culture of simps, you know, the beta simp male that's trying to like sniff after the girl and chase after her to ho hopefully get some Poonan, you know, um, he may or may not. Um, that's interesting to me too. It, it's almost one of the questions like we want to ask, like what came first, the chicken or the egg, you know what I mean? So like when you, when you take sex completely out of the equation, um, it just makes me wonder, like, I guess the only benefit then would be uh, for marriage would be children, um, maybe financial stability, maybe taxes, you know, um, but so many people, especially women now are able to just either not have kids at all, have surrogate mothers, um, uh, adopt. That's a thing that a lot of people are doing. It's just becoming more and more popular um, for same sex couples to have surrogate parents. And so, yeah, I kind of agree and disagree because, and the way I disagree is that like, is that lack of power, sex equals power, you know, is that lack of power kind of also um, turning a lot of men angry, you know, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, but like, I feel like a lot of this, a lot of this modern day, you know, feminism, the, the purple haired, you know, crazy Twitter feminists, like, I think that it's, it's um, breeding this culture, like you would say, it, it's making good men somewhat bad, and it's making bad men somewhat dangerous. Um, so I think it's kind of a double-edged sword, but anyways, maybe I hope I kind of clarified some of my points of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much for the negative side. And with that, we are going to go into about 50 minutes to an hour of open conversation. The floor is yours, panel. All right. I just want to first point out that as Andrew predicted, they conceded pretty much right out of the gate. They kind I of definitely said, didn't well, concede anything. Well, we well, okay. Look, if you can't suss out your position in a debate when it's proposed to you, mm -hmm. you don't get to come on and then look weak and say, "Well, I didn't know and I, I didn't understand weak. and I feel like it wasn't so like now you explained to me, right?" So Here, can like, we can we skip the theatrics and just talk about the so issue again? No, like, it's not so theatrics. Over. It's yeah, it you don't get to so, cope so the, in your so opening point, statement, yeah, anyway, radical anyway, cover, right, so, so, and so get away point. with it. I'm going to call you on it. Right. Obviously. Okay. Go ahead. You can do that later. But uh, so, so to the to the just, point, just the first point is minority way, and the majority. Right? You didn't even have a position okay. really. It was just like, well, we kind of agree, but maybe we disagree, and I don't really know. I'm open. You guys might change my mind. And I just want to let everyone be able to hear both sides. So Rachel sounded like you were about to say something, and then radical coder. It sounded like you had an idea right after that keep your keep your adhd under control while she talks I'll try yeah. so um ashley pointed out something which is that uh yes men are much more successful in suicide attempts and that's because they mean it and women tend to do it out of like this cry for attention stuff which kind of gets to what we're talking about here which is women have become very adept at emotional manipulation social manipulation um, and attention is women's currency. So that the reason there's a gap in suicide there is because women don't really mean it. They're crazy, but they don't want to die. They just want you to pay attention to them. Men feel like there's no point. Like why build the modern world? Why build the entire modern world and then get shit on, you know? So All right. Can That's why men that, actually least? kill themselves. Yeah, can you resp respond exactly to one like, other thing that I just want to bring up real quick? Can, I, can, I, one can we do it one point at a time, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. yeah hey, you, I, you can on. respond to this one too. Oh. Sure. It's tied in. Sorry. Let, let, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm just, I'm a, uh, Andrew, can you just hold, I'll make sure that it goes back to you, but okay. then um, uh, Radical Coder make a point, but then I want to make sure it actually goes right back to Andrew of all people because he was saying about the same yeah, so I, I mean, I think this is kind of a, a, a cute story about like the way that uh, suicide rates play out. Um, I think in reality, um, what we're really talking about is uh, what, what the term is uh, like fatal suicidal behavior versus non-fatal suicidal behavior. And women are extremely overrepresented in non-fatal suicidal behavior and men are overrepresented in fatal suicidal behavior. And uh, I think it's really uh, honestly kind of like sociopathic to just allude that all these women who are uh, like 
uh, basically at, like engaging in uh, uh, suicidal behavior, regardless of whether it's fatal or non-fatal, uh, are just doing it for attention seeking. Um, I, I just I just don't I don't know that you have any good reason to believe that. So they're um, just bad at the, it. They're just bad at it. Then. They're just not as good. They're as just men. not well, as good I, well, as, I, well, men, as men at doing it. <laughs> chill, chill. First of all, I think Ashley mentioned one thing that uh, the methods that they're using uh, tend to take longer. And so, so they're they bad at caught. it. So uh, I mean, you can call it that, but I, I, I don't like this is why I don't even agree with the, the patriarchy the wins again. Yeah, okay. every time the women right. are so, so terrible I, at committing suicide. They can't even again, do it again right. it's very cute. when You guys talk about people killing themselves and it's all big memes for you guys. But for those of us who actually care about when people kill themselves, we actually want to care about. Like, what's oh, yeah. Going virtue on, right? signal yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, virtue, 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 yeah I'm more. sorry. Again, by the way, care about let me ask you. Let me ask you another. That's fine. Let me ask you another question. Go ahead. Finish your point. Right. Okay. So uh, I think it's irresponsible to talk about the uh, terms like successful suicide rate. I think that that phrase uh, already adds a lot of intent to someone engaging in, in fatal suicidal behavior. Um, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I, we can we can leave it there. But I, I think it's 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 kind of cringe to just paint the story that like women actually don't want to die when they uh, engage in uh, suicidal behavior, uh, especially women who do um, uh, end up dying from that suicidal behavior. So uh, yeah, I don't know. So I don't you had nothing. So you had nothing for that useful. other than other than like painting women is so as, nothing uh, useful. As, Bad. silly we're right, very nothing. mean yeah you had Let's nothing just establish hang on, at the beginning that we are point, very mean. Yeah, hang, hang on we're, we're the mean radical side. coder you literally didn't add anything to it there was no reason okay. for you to even I disagree going. and by the way i think i offered I mean, a better way to think let about me ask things. you let me ask you this question and i'm not gonna I, you know i'm keen on spotting passive aggressive behavior and i noticed you rolling in and you were alluding to the fact that you seem to think that there was a conspiracy between ourselves and james oh no this topic no, no, no. You tied this in specifically. I don't think it's Hang on. Just Let me clear. finish. Let me finish, okay. Coder. I'm just you answering. tie it in specifically right at the beginning of the intro and say, I wanted to debate James on whether or not he has a neutral uh, platform. Still do. And then you went on to state that the way that this topic was framed was in some way designed specifically so that we could come in with a win own. We just knew that we would do that because who we're debating. But yeah, I want to know. You specifically don't actually believe that myself, my wife, and James Coons of Modern Day Debate conspired to no, create a topic just to humiliate you, right? Yeah, and I don't think you're going to humiliate me, but no, I don't think that. I think well, that's I silly. don't need to. You do that to yourself. Okay, I, I know just you wanted to clear that up. I just wanted to clear that up because it's okay. insane. Do you want to but engage that's with what, the... That's the way that okay. you, you know, I just want to know that that's how it sounded. Can we talk about the topic? Or yeah, yeah, that, but I'm gonna... not going to let you get away with passive aggressive okay. behavior. Well, I mean, I'm, so... I'm going to be very passive aggressive this whole time. So. <laughs> yeah, I know you already are. We know. Aggressive. Yeah, and right. You, could you go ahead and define then um, what whenever Ryan made his opening statement, he wanted um, either you or Rachel to kind of define what you believe exactly is going on as far as what men are we talking about that are being undervalued and underappreciated? Like, and by whom so generally speaking the way that we would frame this is that it's tiered in the levels of which men are the most ostracized in society but mostly uh all men are affected by this generally working class men seem to seemingly get it the worst if you're not in the top five percent you get it even worse than that societal expectations especially from i think that's with every gender though sorry to interrupt but i mean the top five percent of anything is going to get anything less bad i'm i'm just specifically That's, whenever this, you whenever can't this topic so, so ashley you can't ask me to define it and then in the right. middle of okay, my definition you stop me like clarify. my apologies let me clarify so when i say that like if if you specifically thinking of this subject right now what's the first thing that comes to your mind and who do you feel is white the most men. white men are the most are the most for sure okay. By, uh, by no by no other metric can I can I state this more emphatically that what would generally be considered in public consciousness and public thought a white man is the most discriminated against person inside of the United States period okay old claim yeah well I mean I'm, I'm do you have a defense against it not yet no, we're gonna no I, didn't, I didn't I right? didn't I didn't think so so here's the thing uh, uh Ashley here's why uh for one thing uh again, you and I think you guys would both have to agree with this that women have in, decided to include themselves as a minority group. They are fighting for a type of group rights, and it's framed as them being a minority, even though they're not an actual minority, they're a majority. So, what they do is they do additional demographic breakdowns, right? So, then it's woman plus black, woman plus gay, woman plus this. But the woman adds to the victimhood card. This is how this is done. It's in tiers and it's social tiers, 
designed to break these groups down. And you can actually watch the counter discrimination all the way back to white male. Sure. So to I, that point specifically, I just like that, oh. just like that victimhood mentality. Um, I'll agree with you that like any time that I ever do see anything like, um, especially on social media or in the news, even when it is a man being targeted, it is. It, I mean, what is the common saying that 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 all feminists and in any other subgroup have right now? Right. Is that it's a cis white male. So I can agree with you on that. So, so I, I mean, again, we're kind of in agreement here as we break these things down, everything is designated a victim group. This is actually part of critical race theory, in my opinion. Which I know, based. I know, co yeah, exactly. It's based. Um, but as we break these down, for instance, if you're a white man, for instance, who becomes trans, suddenly you get the victim card, which helps move you into that portion of victim society. Uh, same thing with uh, if you're a woman and you're a white woman, you're less oppressed than a black woman, but you're still a woman. So you're at least a little bit you oppressed. Are, hang on, hang on. So I'm just, I'm just kind of walking you through the victim Olympics speech. here. But I, are you insinuating um, that white men are purposely becoming transgendered so that they aren't as prejudiced against? Well, I think that there's, that there's something to be said for the fact and I'm not just insinuating it, but I would actually push this as a, a part of a larger argument that, yes, unsuccessful, especially middle aged men, rather than blow their brains out, seem to prefer to move towards transitioning. They seem to get the attention that they want, especially on TikTok, places like this. Uh, and the victims, the victim mentality uh, seems to work pretty well for them. Yeah. What data are you basing that off of? I'm, I'm just, just basing this this off of observation would be part of a large. Hang on. It would be part of a larger argument. It's not a singular argument by itself. You asked my opinion on it specifically, mm -hmm. so I gave I it. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious where what you're basing mm -hmm. that off of. I really yeah. honestly don't. Well, I, I can actually help substantiate that. I wrote a piece that's on my Substack, rwilson.substack.com, about programs that are intended to help men transition. They are hypno, like hypno pornography programs that are highly suspicious very well produced nobody knows who's making them probably the most popular one is called bambi sleep and this is uh they get you into the program via like trans porn and things like that called hypnosisification yeah hypnosisification and it is it indoctrinates the male listener with the idea that if they are addicted to porn, they're watching this stuff, they are unsuccessful as men, they would be better off as women because then at least they would get attention, they would get sex, they would be in demand, they would be wanted by someone, and then it further and further integrates the listener into this um, program. And it's meant to help transition them into being a woman. It's very insidious, very nefarious stuff. Um, but these exist. They're out there. Sure. And so uh, if I if I can start, maybe start there, I guess um, the idea that like uh, like becoming a trans woman is, is is like a is like a solution for these men to like finally like uh, be like find find themselves in a better position uh, in society. I, I don't know if that really makes that much sense. Um, I, it's, it's not like, really kind of about a, maybe that would be wait. No, that would be your argument. You would, well, you would well, I can't even say a sentence. That. I can't even say a fucking sentence. So like, why, would, but, why, why do I even start? OK, well, go, like, ahead. Like, go ahead. Can go I, ahead. Can go ahead. And I'm going to pull you both apart so I, I can hear Radical Coder and Andrew, which means Radical Coder, uh, make your statement and then Andrew, you're next. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really buy this narrative that, um, like, uh, trans women are transitioning, like, like just for the sake of, uh, so that they can find themselves in a slightly better position in society. It seems like trans women, uh, get treated pretty badly, uh, throughout society. Um, I, I think that's pretty clear, honestly, if you, if you're on the internet for even more than a few minutes, um, or if you are aware of like the stats around, uh, trans people and their suicide rates and all sorts of other things the way they're discriminated against is pretty common. I did want to speak really quick to the critical race theory thing, just to be clear, critical, all critical race theory says is that race is not a biological category, which is, uh, just that kind of a scientific fact so if you have a problem with that um i mean that's uh you can take that up with the race realists like uh what's that guy who's coming on he's in the the little patch here whatever 
Um, but uh, you know, to, finally, to the point about like the minority pretending to be a majority or majority pretending to be a minority, um, it's kind of a, a, a word game here. Um, minority doesn't minority in this context uh, is not literally uh, the like the number of people is less than the other group of people. Um, it's more about being minoritized, right? Which is more of a, being put in a subordinate position in society. Um, which I, I think it's interesting that at one point Andrew made the point that if if men really wanted to, we could just enslave all the women. Um, and so, like, I, I think I, that, like, the fact that he feels so confident um, stating something so it, insidious and insane um, is, is maybe right. maybe speaks maybe speaks to a, so let's, a, uh, so let's back up let's a value back up. system that, that puts women and, in and let me, let me let's but, walk through. Um, hang on. Yeah, hang on. OK, let's Go walk ahead. through these. Yeah. Is an is an is an ought. Uh, what is an is an ought. I I don't. Why are you asking me this? Can you just get to the I point? need you to answer. My no, you question. don't. No, just, just respond, dude. No, you just answer this my question. So stupid. Just, really, is just an respond, is an please. Is an is an I? I don't know. I don't even know what you mean. I've never heard of philosophy. You know. Anything, so. Okay, so is an is an not. I don't know. I, why? So why don't you just say faith? your point? Why are my you doing point this is, weird? Like, because I need bullshit. to ask you. Need to ask you. No, you it, don't. Just say what not. you want to say. No one's No, because you do it's this. baked into what you're so saying. I can't deconstruct it. I can't deconstruct your argument if you don't answer questions. Can you do that or not? I can't. I can't. So you have to say your point. Okay. If you can't answer, you. if yeah. you can't answer questions, then there's no yeah. point in debating. Well, you can leave if you want. No, you would have to leave. I'm no, asking I don't have to do you. Shit. I'm Fuck asking you, you like, the no, what question. Are you Just say your point, dude. I've, I've, I've said my point. Is and is not. Okay. Now okay. you can say I don't know. Okay. Just so say, just on. say so you don't know. On to the next point, we talked about lighter sentencing and you can do. You move on to whatever you want. I can't believe you want to answer the question. I just, I know why. Why don't you just say your point that you're getting at? Like, why do you have to do this weird? Ryan, this is a debate. Oh my god, debate doesn't mean Ryan. Is it is it ought? Ryan, how many sides does a square have? Like, then then if you know the answers to those questions, answer them. It seems like kind of like you're just trying to play word games. No, well, it's no, not no, word no, 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 no. Semantics in a it debate. Does. Semantics in a debate specifically are very important. I need to know since he's making is statements and then he's saying that I'm using them as ought statements that he knows the difference between you, an is and an ought. The example where I yes, you said okay. that I say because it is the case that men could snap their fingers and therefore women would be enslaved if they did. That means it ought be done. I didn't actually oh, say no, it I ought didn't, be I didn't done. Mean that. Yes, no, but I, that's what I you said that, Ryan. I don't think I said that. Ryan, I'm that's sorry if I did. You, that's what you that said. Right. No, it was more the it was more the implication of such a no no no. You but, said that this is an insane position that I came up with, but I didn't have a position. I gave you an is correct. No, you actually um, said that if men could, they would. No, no I didn't. No, no, he, he said they could. You can not say that at all. This is why it's important that I know that you guys know the difference between what is right. and what ought be. Right. By the way, okay. he well, actually I, I said. I saying that you think no, wait a happen. second. Yeah, I have to clarify that because he said. He you said know, they could, and the fact that they don't is a point in their corner that they are benevolent and that there is no mass cuts, right? hatred. No, he's saying men could. Men have a monopoly on force. They could just enslave women if they wanted to with the snap of a finger, which is true. But they don't, and which means mean they are I not said they ought to do it either, Ryan. So no. it's yeah, I agree. I, and so I agree they shouldn't, we shouldn't right, enslave so women. When you, so when you make those statements, it's important. Now, it, that as to his opening argument. Yeah, you can go back to the opening argument. See, if I, so I have it written right down. I can read it to you, the part that I'm talking about. No, I want to actually play what you said. It's all go, good. Go ahead and play it. But in any I, case, I did not prescribe I, that that should no. be I done. I agree. I said that like five times be now. done, anything mm -hmm. like this. Well, your partner seems to be confused. So then backing up and deconstructing this a little bit further because it's important to do, I understand when you're talking about racial categorization not being biological categories. I have no use for that myself either. However... I'm alluding to your worldview of public consciousness. When we talk about white in the public consciousness, that does mean something. You would agree that that's true, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I was reading something. I, I missed the last half. Uh, white, something about white people with public consciousness. What's the... What's if the you're, look, if, if you're not going to even listen to the questions, no, I, if you're not going to engage, I'm, I'm, I'm really asking you because I, I missed it. I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, be a meme here. Like what was, what was the point again? I'm going to ask you one more time. Yes, I'm not I'm alluding asking. to a biological category with white, but I'm alluding to a public consciousness of what that means. Uh, sure. What about it? And you would agree that there's a public perception of what white is, even if you don't think it's a biological category, right? Yeah, of course. I, I think. Okay. It's, so, it's a category so when I say that this categorization that people often reference and think of outside of biology, but within a social construction being the most oppressed in society, and I make my case by saying that they have no minority status. You say, and your claim is that minority 
is semantics and doesn't actually mean less than. Rather, it means minoritize. What does that mean, minoritize? Uh, minoritize means to make a person or group subordinate in status to a more dominant group or its members. Okay, so uh, this would mean that you could have a majority, but still be minoritized yeah, by an course. actual physical minority, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. I don't saying. think white people are. That's what I'm but, saying is happening to whites yeah. right now, is that yep. they're being minoritized, even though they're that. in the majority. You said if men decided tomorrow that with a snap of a finger that women could be enslaved, then they would be, and all women could do about it would be to whine and cry and complain. And yes, you're, so that's and, true. That's an is statement. He didn't say they hang on, hang on, Ashley, that. Ashley, is that an odd statement? Should. Is that an odd of, statement? I think a lot of men do want to do that, but they, they can't. Wait, no, no, stop. No, 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 you're wrong. I want okay. to know this. the answer to this question, Ashley. Is that an is statement or an ought statement? Did I say that ought to happen or do I say that that is you what is? You implied that it ought to because you implied that you did men not would. imply that. I believe you, that you are attaching I believe, that. That. Yeah, I believe I you're you attaching a lot of shit. This is the problem you with debating said, with people that don't know logic. They don't have any basis in philosophy. They don't understand the, science degree. the my, difference my degree's between in facts an and logic, is claim dog. and an ought claim. He well, why didn't you answer a basic question? He didn't say that stupid. men ought if to. If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, Rachel might be a more pleasant person. Right. So can no, we, again, can not, we talk about the topic? This is not a pleasantness ah. contest. I hate to break this to you. This is not a popularity contest. If it's it were, not a you'd lose. Of who's nicer. Exactly. This is a debate. <laughs> If and you I, can't debate, get the hell off the show. And on that, Rachel, I'm pulling everybody it. apart. Pulling everybody apart. Enjoy Thank the you. enthusiasm oh. and enjoy the spice. Going to send love out there. Keep on sending in questions. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. But with that, we're going to hand it off to one person. Ashley, you just put up your finger, and thus you are the next speaker. I, I do believe that I get the sentiment of what you are saying. But I do believe also, Andrew, that that's wordplay and i think that you know it i think it's a manipulative tactic to use when you said if the thanos technique right like if tomorrow men could snap their fingers and no, all they women can they can i'm talking i thought that's tomorrow... nice i'm talking too <laughs> is that amazing we know that's the problem <laughs> do you know how a debate works andrew the yeah. moderator gave me the floor if you can't handle it then get out yeah but that's just showing more preference and she proves that men are treated like shit I'm yeah, just Andrew's saying the most that impressed. In instantly yeah, exactly. picking a woman's side, of course, but go ahead, go ahead. Give us your fluff, illogical bullshit that I can respond to. I'll wait. Oh, well, that's so kind of you. Thank uh, you. It is because I'm benevolent. I told you. If tomorrow men could use the Thanos technique and snap their fingers and all women would be enslaved, could be enslaved, pardon me, then they would be. Does that not sound to you? Does that not sound to any logical person, Rachel, that if they could then they would well Doesn't then why don't that? they why haven't they he's just saying they because could that's not but a fucking Ashley, possibility you twat the love of god wait, 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 just... wait are you saying that there's not civilizations right this second where men haven't snapped their fingers and women are completely dominated and subservient to them i'm saying that thanos is from a comic book and that is a surreal oh idea. really is he i didn't know that tell me more things i don't know ashley Okay, I can probably do that, to be quite honest. <laughs> I I'm just saying, I think that no. your technique is, you, to, is to play word games, and it's just No, that's silly. not word games. It's, Try to uh, pay okay. attention. Let me explain it to you. He's saying if men were the evil bastards that the, you know, the evil patriarchy that they're painted to be, they okay. would enslave women tomorrow because they can. They can't. Do you but they don't. Right. Do you and understand the fact that they don't? My point no, of view the fact that, that they what, let me finish. The you fact never let me don't, finish. You never fucking let me finish. That they I said don't my point of view is that, that I think I understand the sentiment, Rachel, but that's not the way it was interpreted. I, it doesn't matter. We are going to it's pull, what he actually said. I'm going to pull both apart, and it sounded like, Rachel, you were finishing something, so I'm going to yes. give it to you, and then I'll give it back to you, Ashley. Yes. What Andrew actually said, I don't care what you're inferring or how it made you feel. What he actually said was, if men wanted to be the tyrants that they're painted as, they could do it tomorrow, but they don't. They haven't, and they don't, and they're not going to, which but is proof that they are, which is proof that they are benevolent, that they are not some kind of evil oppressors who just want to enslave us because they have that ability, yet they don't do it. Now, we need to get back to the topic of the debate, and you two need to defend your position. 
So I would like to hear your argument as to why men are not ignored or discarded or treated unfairly. And please present an argument. My argument is that it's men like your husband who represent a lot of these assholes and it makes women hate all men. That's my argument. How do you like them apples? That's not an argument. Whatever, well, you were playing well, I, I actually Bradley. think there is a point to that, if I, if I can. I think there is something to that because I think a lot of the times when men we talk like about me. men- It's men like you. So, so, so I think to be clear, it's to be clear true. about- Gross, to be dude. clear about the question of the debate, it was about whether men are underappreciated compared to women, correct? That was how the email yes. was framed. Um, yes. So I, I think it's interesting that a lot of times, I, I, like in a lot of the context that I would agree that men are undervalued and underappreciated, it's by other men um, in a lot of ways, like by bosses, um, by, and by, even by like um, like family members and stuff, and, and by other men who don't who perceive them as not living up to certain masculine ideals, um, and and that they are shamed well, for these teammates, things. Teammates, friends. Um, I, I mean, at the beginning of this debate, uh, which by the way I'm not, but at the beginning of this debate, Andrew mocked me for supposedly being gay, um, which I think is just, right uh, because I embrace a lot of feminine characteristics, or from his perspective, I do, and he's shaming me for that. He's using that as an insult to me, right? He's shaming me for presenting in what he uh, perceives as a feminine way, and he's saying not only am I doing that, but he's saying that's a bad thing. Um, um, so I'd say that it's men like, again, like Ashley said, it's, it's men like Andrew and men who are who are pushing other men down um, for for presenting or expo expressing themselves in ways that he's uncomfortable with, um, who are who are really and the ones who are, are undervaluing. Uh, and making... Why are they higher? Whether or not it has something to do with thoughts or who did it better or who did it worse, whatever. Why are they higher? Because mental health is discouraged in men. That's why. And and who's doing that discouraging men like you, Andrew? Yeah, again, other men, especially men like Andrew. So back to me being the epitome of the evil patriarchy, which is oppressing everybody. Meanwhile, I have things a, we never said. Hang on. I have a solid back. whole family unit with multiple children and have been married successfully, I might add, for 16 years. Any track record of anybody else here who can say that? Anybody? Hands? Hands? Nobody. No, not not a single person. The stable the only stable male person who's here the only stable person who has these male characteristics that i espouse in these virtues is the only one that has an <laughs> actual stable family unit gave you guys an opportunity to say me too but there is no me too just me just me right Sorry, I didn't so i think i think what it is <laughs> i think what it is it's sheer jealousy very mm -hmm. upset you're very unhappy. You're not very thrilled that you don't understand basic logic. And I called you out on it, but you still haven't actually given us you, what Rachel's asked for multiple up. times, which is an I argument. Just, Do you have an argument? And, and all you're saying is you're jealous. You're jealous. Do you have an argument, Ashley. We I thought I did make an argument. Yeah, argument. actually, we presented an argument. What's yeah. the yeah. argument? Several. Uh, What's the argument? If I can clarify. Yeah. Um, Clarify. The argument that I was making just now um, <laughs> was that in, in the the because I wanted to be more specific about like which men by whom uh, I would say that in a lot of ways the men who are undervalued in society uh, they are undervalued and underappreciated not by by like women right. as a gender but by a, a lot of other men and, and let me by respond, some women, um, but largely yeah. by other men. And let me respond to that argument. And let me respond to that argument. Right. Mm -hmm. My response to the argument is that what you guys have tried to do is say I am responsible it's men like me who are responsible for the oppression of people like you so therefore i'm trying this is mm, actually no. alludes I'm to fine. my point that you guys are as oppressive as possible to family dynamics in an actual patriarchal system and this is why men are shutting down all over the place because little wimps come you, in you and say you're being oppressive you're being mean you're being cruel you being a shitty person bro what yeah. makes me a shitty person what makes me a shitty person give me an time. argument Trust about me. how i'm a shitty person uh, well, what's things, the argument for me being a bad person one, what the is one it? example that i the one example that i used um was that you you shame you you again you alluded to the idea that i'm gay and you also were using yeah, like saying that like it's a bad thing you're gay like, yeah, like it was literally the first thing you said. Like, I, as I, but you were like, Andrew I know you were is memeing, mean is not an argument. Please I, okay, stick to the you, topic. Thank you, and Rachel. Thank you. I know, I know, I, yeah, I know. So I'm playing uh, part again. Uh, radical. So it's, it's, not, it's not about being mean. I'm, I'm sorry. 
No, you're good. Um, oh. to, uh, pull uh, radical, and then it'll put, throw it over to the yes. I side wasn't after. presenting yeah. right. So uh, an I argument. Think, I think you said radical. You... Is your are you are you radical, Andrew? Um, I don't. Did think you so. want me to clarify the position or not? No, I wanted to clarify my position. So I already so know my, your position. Well, it doesn't seem like you do. So to be clear, my issue wasn't with you being mean. My issue was with the punchline of what you were being mean about. Right. So you were using my uh, uh, a lot of traits that I have that people perceive as feminine, and you were saying that these are bad things. You were insulting me. I was. I don't feel insulted. To be clear, I don't care. Oh, I, I get called gay all the time. I'm gonna fuck, dude. I, I, I'm, a I'm gay sure you do. Man, I'm and sure I fucking, you do. And I fucking rock it. All right. Okay. And I own that shit. And that's fine. But you, you were should. recognizing it. And you were saying that I wasn't living up to your ideal of masculinity. And you're saying that's a bad thing. I think a lot of times this is the problem because we see men who are shaming other men for not living up to some uh, archetype of masculinity. And 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 that, that when men find that they don't live up to these things, that they're not able to provide in, in the ways that they're in, which I provide just fine. But to the men who feel like they can't provide in the ways that they're expected to, um, this is where a lot of mental health crises come in. And they're also shamed for seeking help and expressing their emotions and right. all sorts of things. By Radical you. coder, I'm going to... I'm going to, here's my counter argument to this okay. ridiculous argument, by the way, which has no merit on anything. Just so you understand, I want to ask you a very basic question, see if you can answer it. Uh, Ashley over there who hates me, thinking I'm a mean dick because I called you gay at the outset of I this. I also think you're a mean dick. Because it was hilarious, by the way, and you have no sense of humor, uh, and it was hilarious. If the building was burning down and she had to walk over to your five foot four ass who weighs 125 pounds or walk over to my six foot 180 pound person and say, please run in there and take my child out of the building. She wouldn't pick you, Coder. And Andrew, this is why less than you this is night. why this is why you <laughs> get shamed. The reason you get shamed for not living up to the expectation of masculinity is because we need masculine men to run society. That's right, why we need broke. we need it. Okay, I, I wait. Well, who do you think, Coder? Coder, who do you think? Who do you Maybe. think a woman would generally go to if they saw you with Maybe your gloves you. I, and your pink hair? Right. I don't. Have who do you think? But but to be no, clear, answer I, my we're question. The same I, I don't know. He just says and I, and he just like says I don't know. Yeah. He just says I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't okay. know. Probably me. Uh, it seems like you might be a little bit more nimble in that situation, Ryan. Yeah, I I move pretty quick. I I can lift a little bit. Don't worry. I got okay, you, but we're getting way off. Lift your topic. pink weights. This was supposed yeah. to be a debate about whether or not men are treated badly. Right. I know that's what we want to talk about, but you guys don't want to. You, you. I do. That's exactly tangents. what yeah. I want to talk about. Okay. Cool. So, Let's do it. Yeah. So we, I outlined a ton of points in my opening, which none, neither of you have addressed. This is a common problem that I, I actually over and over. Ashley, it's point. you've it's been numbers. talking. It's my turn to talk. You're a lion. I've outlined several points that prove that men are actually at a disadvantage and are treated worse than women in society now, right? So you haven't answered to any of those. And this is a common problem I run into with people who don't understand what a debate is or how to do it. You are supposed to respond to my points. When I say, why are men getting 40% longer sentences than women for the exact same crime? Why are boys because no one's disagreeing with you on that, dumbass? Well, you think because they already conceded we're the debate to at this point, we're just naming so them. So make an argument that proves why would that I argue I'm against wrong? something I fucking agree with? Right? Why are you debating with me? Right. If you agree with me, why are you here debating? Why me? don't you talk to the host about that? No, no, you're the one who accepted it's a conspiracy. the debate. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. And I, accepted the debate. I assumed I was on the other side, bitch. <laughs> that's funny oh bitch. Uh, now i'm a bitch this is see what i mean that she's you so are. competent that she can't she emotionally can't you're a, hang on you're emotionally unhinged yes. you need to calm yeah, calm much. calm down if the Ashley, patriarchy were still it. around they would take care of women like ashley and make them behave <laughs> so please ashley well if, debate if me. Still then who would buy your book actually your debate a blow job more often he wouldn't be so wound up and i appreciate uh, okay. Be a suffice, but just going to send a reminder that all of our lovely audience wants to hear each of your points. And so going to hand it back to whoever would like to have the ball. Yeah, so I'd like to, to I'd like to take it from here. Um, interestingly enough, instantly Ashley goes right for the degenerate cut, right? The assumption being that I'm just so wound up from a lack of blowjobs. Ashley, I've heard is this? You say this Hang on. Before on Ashley, no, you it's haven't. Not an assumption. What no. are you talking? You've never heard it once. No, yes, you've I never. Have. He doesn't. I'll tell you ever what. I'll tell you what. That. 
I'll make a five hundred one five hundred dollar bet with you right now, and you I'll give you two months. Alex two from months. Friends with Fire Stream that marriages often are sexless, and that it's okay to have a sexless marriage. No, he you did not. What did. in the yes, world? He did. No, Even, he did not. Hang on, hang on, Trey, 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 both of you. When I found out why his wife, how do you think? I want to. I just want to. I just want to let you know again. You still don't understand the difference between. She's and so odd, threatened. But She's got. I have not. I, I have never ever pathetic. made such a statement. I just think it's hilarious that the first thing you go to to how to make a man pathetic. behave is to give them a blowjob. I think yeah, that that's interesting and it. hilarious, in fact. That he doesn't that have anything like upstairs. She has to try to use sexuality. Right, you can control and that guy if you, you use You have to use pussy. physical abuse. <laughs> and You're doing the same fucking thing. If you, if you would like Radical Coder or Ashley, I'll give you like another 30 more seconds and then we'll go back over the yes side. Yep, you're good. All right, so Rachel, you uh, I said that in response to you talking about men physically abusing a woman in order to put her in her place. But you're going to sit there. I didn't and say me. physically. You're, when oh, did but, I say physical abuse? Oh, I'm sorry. Was I insinuating things again? You said yes. in the, of the patriarchy, men would handle women like Ashley to put her yeah. in her place. You just would be socially shamed into not being a stupid, vapid, empty-headed bitch who calls me a bitch because I am smart and know how to debate. But and I you've got nothing up here. Bitch, and now I'm calling you've got you nothing one. upstairs. You and don't, so, you shouldn't be here. So you now that we are doing something else. Now that we're even on, on ad hominems, I want to remind <laughs> everyone just to attack the arguments and not the people. Yes, but please. Wait, wait, moderator. Please an argument wait. for the love of God. But wait, all those, of are, those weren't ad homs. Those weren't, they're not ad homs if they're truth claims. The truth <laughs> exactly. claim that Rachel's making is that Ashley's an empty-headed, stupid bitch. It's a truth claim. And it's not an ad hom. Is that Rachel? Is this I thought like you were going to make a good point. But. What any of our, stick. Our, our, our interlocutors have had to say tonight, their links are in the description below. Just want to Poor send Amy. more love out there. Oh, I'm happy. Poor Amy, I'm sorry. <laughs> not at all. Appreciate I'm enjoying you. the good conversation. You are fun. Amy, thank you. <laughs> thank you so very much. Send it right back to all of you. And we still have a good 20, 30 minutes of meat in here if we have questions for each other. And so it's right back I really, over I really, really do want to actually debate the topic. So Me if too. you guys so, can present an yeah. argument for your side rather than just saying you agree with us, that would be awesome. Well, to well, be honest, Rachel, you guys have been nothing but in the beginning, I thought it was OK. But you've come in, in my opinion, again, in bad faith. You're very con. But truly, truly, you really are, Rachel. You're very condescending. And I felt like in the beginning, we were kind of having a conversation where we were trying to find some things that are kind of different that we don't agree on and then you specifically andrew literally go straight into ad hominem attacks i'm not the one that went there i'm not i'm not the one that went there you don't even know what to argue uh, semantics uh, oh, i'll tell you what i'll tell you what kind of ashley well, can I, after after yeah, what's can I, what ashley let me just ask you a direct a... question what do you think an ad hominem is it when you matter, attack it's... the person and not the argument that's what i think it is that's not what it means okay well, you want to tell me what an, do you want to tell me again what an ad hominem is so like you can make you can make a disparaging comment about somebody if it's pertinent to your argument. Like for instance, if Rachel says and it's pertinent to say this, you're actually too stupid to have a debate with. That's pertinent to I her argument you that you're not smart okay. enough to debate. You see what I'm saying? That's it's not pertinent to this argument. No, so, no, no, so no, when no, we talk about to her argument, it's not. So an one of the points. One of the points Andrew, you guys brought up in the beginning. One of the points. One of the points. I want to see them try to craft an argument. I do. No, no, I, don't, I ahead, really Ryan. don't think you do, honestly. I do. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. So one of the points that was made is that masculinity is scorned in its totality. I really don't agree with this. I think that people conflate this a lot because we talk about things like toxic masculinity, which again is like very specific aspects of masculinity that are scorned, that are harmful both to men and the people around them. Uh, so I totally don't agree with the statement that masculinity is scorned. I think that like being strong, being uh, providing for people around you and being supportive of the people around you, uh, being a good father, things like this are absolutely not shamed in society. These things are absolutely praised in society uh, and for good reason, because these are positive things. So uh, to suggest that masculinity and its totality is scorned, uh, I think is a, a moot point, but uh, maybe you, you disagree. I also think that saying, I, I mean, I really had a, an issue with saying that uh, middle-aged white males are, are legitimately 
purposely becoming transgendered in order to not be discriminated against so much. I thought that was an egregious statement to make. And you had absolutely nothing but just your your observations to back that Sissy up. Sissy hypno-porn, apparently. It, okay, it, well, yeah. let's, but, I mean, let's we're the go ones with what Ryan argument. said, because Ryan actually crafted an argument rather than complaining. So Ryan actually tried to make a point there. And I would like to address his point, which is okay. that I would say, this is how I would push back on what you said, Ryan. If a man has an affair and leaves his wife and kids for another woman, he is universally panned and bashed as a piece of shit, a bad guy, a deadbeat dad. On the other hand, if a woman has an affair and leaves her family for someone else, the universal assumption is mostly like, well, yeah, she had to be happy you know, there was probably something she was lacking and, and we shouldn't judge her. We can't judge her because she had to be happy. You wouldn't want her to be unhappy. So how do we address this, uh, this different perception of like cheating and having an affair or leaving the family, breaking up the family? And women initiate at least 70% of all divorces among college educated women. That number is 90%. So how do we address that? I disagree with you. I don't think women who cheat and leave their families are viewed that way at all. I think, in fact, mm -hmm. often they're called whores, uh, deserters. Um, my mother did that to our family, and, and and I never heard a good thing about that. I, I don't know where you're getting that. I know that your perception is your reality, and maybe that's been your reality. It has most certainly not been my reality. I don't I don't understand yeah. where you're bringing that. Argument. I will say, she brought, say she brought in the single on moms so, are defended point, like sure. crazy. Yeah, sure, single to, to moms, but that's not the same as cheating and leaving. Seventy percent of single moms are single by choice. They initiate okay. the divorce. But, 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 but you're they making a, you're complaining a lot of different things because here. it's a because it's okay. one of the primary reasons they claim they got that's the divorce is they were unfulfilled and yeah. wanted to have sex with other men. That's yeah. why. That's no, it's not divorce, abuse. Right? It's not abuse. That's a total misconception. If you look at all the so surveys, yeah, why women choose yeah. divorce. It's things like they're okay. bored, they're unfulfilled, they don't feel appreciated, they want to find themselves, shit like that. Abuse yeah. is like number six or seven. I'm not, I'm not it's right. Still a lot, I'm, right? I'm being legitimate because I really do want to know, no, like, it's still what, not uh, a lot. what what studies or like uh, statistics, like what source? What's your source for that part of it? And I'm genuinely curious because right. I've read a so lot about it in my book. So there's a bunch of sources in my book. Chapter ten is all about this, and I have maybe a dozen citations on this, but it's. Mm -hmm. It's um, surveys that are conducted by law firms. It's the uh, Department of uh, Homeland Security, not Homeland Security, Department of Human Services um, okay. that does this kind of statistical work. So it's government sources, it's uh, okay. legal firms. And then there's also been a, a couple of different studies done by like sociologists who study this kind of stuff. So gotcha. I was genuinely, thank sure. you for I was genuinely sure. And also in those studies, is it, do they also specify that the woman cheated? No, it's why it, it's usually just reasons women give for initiating divorce. And the gotcha. normal assumption is, oh, there must be abuse, but that's usually really far down on the list. It's usually gotcha. things like, oh, I'm just, I'm unfulfilled. Fulfillment, I feel money, things like this. That yeah, I can agree like that. with. I've read, I've read a lot of I've read a lot of the same thing. I've read a lot of the same thing. And I find that to be very sad. I think that marriage in yeah. and of itself, I think that it's not what it used to be. And I think that it's too easy to quit, uh, yes, move I on, agree. and still get alimony and still get child support and still be able to be fulfilled. I agree with you on that. Because they're treating just, women like shit, right? In that sense, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I agree on that. I do. I'm not just here to be an asshole, but I genuinely was curious about that's like- That's good, because I'm way better at that, because I'm a man. You are. Okay. But I, I was genuinely curious about the cheating thing, though, like because you did specifically say that like men cheat and they're almost praised for it or shamed oh, so for it, it, it when yeah, they're okay. almost- Christ, so Mary, so so here. That's that, that's the part that I. Yeah, so let's so let's dive into that part. Sorry, but mm -hmm. my personal experience, you know, yeah, my I see women. So just to just to give the, the to, because we're working off of like observational evidence and yeah, experience yeah. and things like this. Let's dive yeah. into that a little bit. Don't you agree that married men tend to have more friends who are married, have children because their interests are more aligned? Same thing with single men and single women. They generally have single friends because their interests are more aligned. This is generally, even even polling will show this, that- okay. um, Generally, yes. Yeah, yeah so gen generally speaking. 
Yeah. Inside these different arenas, if you're a single man, you're hanging out with single men, you cheat on a woman. Um, so I, I would consider even girlfriend status to be single, unmarried, in other words. Uh, gotcha. they're, you're perceived very differently in those in groups than you would be as a married man inside of married in groups. So if mm-hmm. you're married, you cheat as a man, you're married, the married in groups you're a part of are much more likely to shame you than if you're a single man. That's what her, that's what her point is. Just to kind of give you credence to your observational evidence there, right? Your in group, okay. the in group that you're a part of is going to shame you differently. Okay. So you're saying that in this scenario, the married woman and the married man, that the woman has, I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding you, in this scenario that the woman has more single friends and the man has more married friends? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that the perception, so I think that what you're saying is that, um, you know, the dude who cheats and gets the high five from other men, I'm saying his in group is mostly going to be single, unmarried. Okay, I got you, I got you. And the in group of the man who's going to be shamed for not taking care of his family or Mm -hmm. cheating on his wife, breaking his family up, this and that, is going to be more likely to be shamed by other married men. So what about the woman then and, and what well, she's... Well, so this is this is the interesting part because so many women initiate the divorces to begin with. Mm-hmm. They seem to have a much better support structure when it comes to things like cheating and horrible behaviors because most of their in-group are conducting the same behaviors and the men's in-group is not. In, in, the, in the, those scenarios. Yeah, okay. correct. You see okay. what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So, I mean, would you even disagree with that? It makes total that, sense. I don't disagree. I right. think that... You're surrounding yourself with a ter- certain type of person living a certain type of lifestyle. It does tend to rub off or vice versa. That I will completely agree with in that scenario. I'm just saying, though, I I haven't personally experienced that I- in my life. Like, I haven't. Uh, again, though, I grew up in a broken home and my mother did do a lot of these things. You know, she did have affairs and kind of ran out on us and, you know, saw yada, yada. So, this is anecdotal, I understand, but I'm just saying like that's... And this created a concave of cataclysmic events, which then affected your life. And does it re- did it repeat itself? <laughs> did the behaviors repeat themselves? They didn't. No, they did not repeat themselves. I, I am divorced, but I never cheated on my husband. Well, right. Maybe, yeah. well, maybe there's caveats with every single situation, but the behavior but yeah, did the, repeat itself. Right. Yeah. You try to do better each generation. Absolutely. Yeah. So just to the, the whole cheating, I, like I... It seems like be, like people cheating on each other is pretty universally like dis- despised. I mean, like I, I do see like you know occasionally like like an Instagram post or like some some woman somewhere who's like, oh yeah, uh, you go girl, cheat on him, you know, like like fuck it, fuck his fuck his dad, fuck his boyfriend. We don't like, it. <laughs> but like I think these are like pretty extreme outliers. I don't think this is like there's like large uh, uh, support systems uh, for for women specifically for cheating on their husbands. I think generally, but but um, Coder, I this would generally stand, people, I think it generally would stand to logic. Are, uh, I don't. I don't think it stands to logic. I think. Well, I think then let's do, let's are... look at then then let's look at it like I just did with Ashley. If your in group, who's married men, do not initiate these divorces and don't do these general types of behaviors, and this is most of what your friend group com- is comprised of, don't you agree that the social shaming in that in group would be far more than an in group of people who do compromise the group that is conducting the behavior so you so you're saying that that like women who are getting divorces who are cheating on their husbands they're probably hanging out with other women who are cheating on their Correct. husbands getting divorced this is okay. by well, the again, numbers this, like this by the numbers. Spe- <laughs> no, no 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 the numbers the numbers that you're talking about are about women getting divorced and hanging out with other women who are divorced but you're not exactly. but, but you're but that's not women no 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 if you're husbands. talking about that's something that's not women who are cheating on their husbands and hanging you're out you're talking with about 70 no you're I'm talking I'm you're trying to extrapolate this to a huge amount of women i have some data you can't do that i'm yeah doesn't it might help. Right there was a very large UK study, I think it was done in 20, 2018, if I remember correctly, that showed this chain reaction where if in a friend group, one couple breaks up because one of the partners cheated, it's it re- increases the chances of the other couples cheating and breaking up by like 250 percent or something like that which makes like logical it, a, sense it right, makes it's logical a social sense. contagion it's a social yeah. contagion but my point was that when women cheat or when women leave a marriage 
They generally get a lot of sympathy, a lot of support. There's so much support for single moms. Single moms are heroes. Single moms are amazing. And that it doesn't really matter what the reasoning is of why they, you know, if it was by choice or not that they became a single mom. Whereas like if a, day, if a man- We just need to support people who are I single think parents. That, I no, think if a gonna... man leaves a marriage because he says, look, I wasn't treated good. I was treated poorly. And so I had an affair and left. Everyone's like, oh, what a piece of shit. He's such an asshole. What a deadbeat dad. And it's like, if the mom yeah. says, oh, I didn't feel fulfilled and loved. I didn't feel like I was getting enough attention. So I had to cheat. There's just generally a lot of sympathy. People are more sympathetic to women. And just to add to that life. real quick, before you In guys general, respond, real quick, are- real quick, real oh, quick, real quick, but just to add I to it real it. quick for radical coder. This is why we look at the virtues of masculinity so much, because it is within our virtues to shame men who are horrific to their family, abandon them, treat them like they're interchangeable fucking widgets. And that's why we use shame tactics. You might think it's mean, but it's necessary within the in-group so that we can keep all of our families intact. We can keep them together. We can work together. That's how that works in real time. Hey, don't cheat on your husband or your wife, you piece of shit. What are you thinking? I, you again, got kids at home. This you is got my kids whole, at home. Hang on, Actually, Rachel hang on. a few minutes ago. I, I just wanted you, to clarify. Um, I'll just respond and then... And then. Go, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like, Andrew... Uh, like, I'll just say it seems like both of you have a point. So if you want, just go 30 seconds or whatever, back to forth, and then we'll hand it over back to the yes. Yeah, I, I was just going to add, like, to to what Andrew was saying. Like, I, I, I was agreeing that, like, there, like, there's shame around people who are cheating on their spouses. And that, like, I, I think that's fine. I don't mind shaming people who cheat. Um, But I also don't, I don't think that that then places, like, extra blame on people who are single parents to, like, like, they should be, like, like treated worse for, for that at the end of the day. Like, they still need support, like, to raise those children. And, and that, like, that's, it, fundamentally, that's what I care about more um, than how the relationship ended. Uh, so I think that's maybe the difference we have. Okay, so I understand that. That, but listen very the, the oh, go question ahead, go ahead. i had for rachel um because you wrote the book on the data chapter 10 i think um so you were saying that like what was it 70 percent okay so 70 percent of divorces are initiated by women got it and then you were saying that the data overwhelmingly shows like and you cited your sources of of why um they left and it was basically because they felt unfulfilled they were bored more or less they were bored and they just wanted out right yeah my question was the whole time I was wondering of the 70%, what percentage are they actually getting these answers from that? That's kind of an important caveat. You mean like that. what was the sample size? Right. So say it's, 70% of people did something like how obviously well, you mean, don't know. It's, so, it's a very so, study to study though. No, no, that's a really simple answer. So when you get a divorce, one party or the other has to file for the divorce, right? right. I, So in all 50 states, they can take that data and see that in 70% of all divorces filed, that it was the wife in the marriage who filed for it. I get that part. Yeah. But the reasoning behind it, you said that was that that would depend on what self-reports. And it's very important. I have a point to that, which I can make later or whatever, but that that's very important to me to know because of 70%. We get it. We get it. But of those 70 percent, what percentage of those women were actually interviewed that actually said these things? It it seems like we're kind of lumping two things together. And the reason I say that is because no, no, I have a reason, Andrew, is because my husband actually wanted to leave me because he fell out of love with me. Neither of us cheated. There wasn't abuse. I, I feel slighted in that sense. Right. But I am the one that actually filed the papers. The reason being is that my lawyer advised me to do so because it was more beneficial to me to do so. It was more beneficial to do so in the beginning, even though I am not the one. And trust me when I say I begged on my knees for him to reconsider. Yeah, but that's but that's but, but, but these but, are but, these but, are outliers, it's, though. If you're, you're talking about outliers, that seventy, per, you say it's outliers, but I'm saying like we have the self reports. That's why, um, because we have the self reports. That's the whole point. Going back to of voters, all seventy percent, though, there's no way that each one of those women said it's because I'm bored or I. All empirical data I is imperfect. We have to operate off of. Exactly. If we're going to use empirical it's, it's data, we have to, to operate understand. off of the best that we can. If we're going to even bother using it, I can say. But Andrew, I can say that that's why I cited multiple sources in my book. Right. Yeah, Not I read one. the same kind right. of thing. So, yeah. and if they all kind of fall into line with each other, and they're all the same ratios, then that 
Makes but of, but of what percentage? That's what I'm saying. So, like, I was one that filed for okay, divorce. Okay, so we can't America. we I, can't ask a hundred percent of every woman who exactly, files for divorce why. Exactly. But we can get a large enough sample size that it establishes a pattern. And also, you have to look at the women that are willing to answer these types of questions. I well, wouldn't. I have, mean, well, you have to know. In most, in no fault divorce states, you usually cite some kind of. Well, reason. and these things. Hang on. These so things are all control, they're on controlled. They're well. controlled for. These are controlled for. It's controlled yeah. to so that we can yeah, eliminate these types of outliers. Yeah, but for listen. That were interviewed by lawyers. Yeah, it's not just that though. They take a combination of these things, and you have controls that are put in, like you do with all empirical reporting or empirical data. Not well. I mean, in some of it's imperfect to your point, but. I feel like unless you have an actual empirical argument to bring against it, well, we've it's kind of moved. so much though tonight about things that are personal to us, about our own observations. Well, you have. You have. Right? <laughs> and so it does kind of fall in line with that. And that was honestly kind of triggering in my mind. Like, but it's that that data is not, uh, you know, foolproof. That is, it's yeah. not. Well, I get it. But so I want to. I want to lead this back, you know? if you don't mind, to radical coder. Yeah, radical absolutely. Coder says, I just wanted sure. to talk about that for a moment. Nobody's hey. nobody's making the claim, radical coder, that it's a monolith. Okay, what I'm saying is that all of these different exactly. groups. Going back to your point, let me just make sure that you remember what your point was before, mm -hmm. because there was a diversion. <laughs> you were explaining that you yourself thought. That, well, it, you know, all that matters is, uh, you know, helping helping people who are in a single situation uh, or they're single. In other words, they're single. They have What's kids. The things like that. I care about. OK, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. But going back to this, I need you to concede this point that different people are going to have different in groups based on social situation and status. Based uh, on social situation like and very, status. I, I don't think I gave any indication that I disagreed with the statement. Okay, right. So because this is true, I need to go back to what I'm saying with I have engaged with like the red pill community, the blue pill community. And when I'm talking about these communities, I'm talking about the degenerates who are like trying to teach people how to pick up women, to pick up artists, this kind of shit. Right. Yeah, Those are the type of women who cheat on their husbands. Okay. Like, hang on. Like yeah, hang on. These They're are terrible the, well, of them. Right. No, these are the kind of Aren't guys. They? These Listen, these are the kind of guys who will walk over and high five you if you scored the night before. Even if you were cheating on your girlfriend, they don't fucking care. Now, this is not, again, a monolith. Okay. Some of them may, but by and large, they don't care. But if you move over to the married demographic or the Christian demographic, there's a, a huge amount of social stigma from Christian married couples against other Christian married couples who step out of their wife or abandon their family or things like this. It's important that you acknowledge that that's true because these are the types of virtues that we espouse. And I'm not sure that you even disagree with them. Um, and before you respond, actually, I will say we have about five more minutes left of open discussion. It has been a lively and fun back and forth, but we're about to go into the Q&A section. So if you would like any or all of our interlocutors to answer your question or comment, please send in your chats at Amy Newman or your super chats, which will get you priority and not only that, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. But once again, panel, if you have a question for each other, now is the time to get it in. Uh, so I guess I'll start by saying it's, I think it's interesting the, you, the point you bring up about like the Red Bull community. I mean, this massive community that like with all the Andrew Tate stuff, this clearly is attracting a very large amount of men. Uh, and I feel like this is uh, is, if this is not counter to what Rachel was saying earlier, uh, that like men are shamed, men are the ones who are shamed and tortured for treating on their on their wives, but they they can find these support networks, obviously, if they go to these communities, so they can still find those. Um, but more importantly, um, I think that if people are in marriages that they don't want to be in, uh, I think the, the the problem is that we don't have support structures for these people to be to take care of their children after this fact. Whoever it is initiating divorce, whoever is leaving, we don't have the systems in place to help them after the fact. And I think that's a, a bigger problem, right? Um, but there are people who will support them in either direction, I guess. So we talk about the women who are going to high five, oh, you left your husband. And we talk about the men who are going to high five, oh, you cheated on your wife or your girlfriend. Like both of these exist. Both of these support networks exist. So this doesn't really speak to like whether or not men are undervalued. It does. Um, 
it, it, we could bring it back to like, what are the, are, who is more likely, uh, I guess, to find those support networks? And I would say it, it's much easier to find uh, the support network of the red pill type of people, even if it is your like your wife that you are, are, are leaving out on, um, like you're going to go and become a gig, the giga chat in these in these groups, right? Where you're going to go and find as many women as you want and, and get high fives for it um, and, and do all these things. While I, I think I think the, the woman uh, is probably less likely to find uh, a, a massive network uh, of online people who they can instantly find camaraderie and and and, uh, and fraternize with uh, in this regard. So uh, I think that's interesting. It doesn't really speak to like whether or not men are undervalued, I guess. But yeah, that's actually what I was going to say is that this really doesn't address the the topic. And I'm, I keep trying oh, no, to get no. back to the topic. OK, and yeah, I'm sure. I think that we have again, I presented a lot of evidence in my opening which I think clearly demonstrates that there is a bias in favor of giving women every break possible, right? Um, I could cite more. There are special scholarships for women, special business uh, loan opportunities for women. If you're a woman, you just have a natural hand up because there's this underlying assumption that women are disadvantaged or historically you're, you're, disadvantaged. Your startup right? business so, loans are quite lower, though, than the males. Yeah, which is why, which is why these affirmative action type things come because from women don't want saying. to. Okay, but listen, guys, what I'm saying is the topic of the debate is supposed to be are men like treated poorly, ignored? Uh, we understand, doing, Rachel. Right. I'm sorry right. That wasn't so great. we keep but talking I about like what happens after a divorce or or why people get divorced, and it's like. We have very clear evidence that if you're a woman, if you all you have to do as a woman is have a vagina and be moderately attractive and you're going to have a much easier time in life than any man, at least for the first half of your life. That but may you're not only going to be valued for that vagina, right? That's not and what and what kind of a lot of women want a lot more than that, right? Well, I always argue we should have that, we should have gone into that then, right? We should have. We well, should have brought it up <laughs> because I always argue against that. But the point is, you guys still haven't presented like here's an example of how women are disadvantaged or how men are yeah, privileged. like for example, you guys haven't presented like a scenario, right, data, right, so an argument that are, shows. That I agree men with you, are privileged. I get what you're saying, and I agree with you. But honestly, I think the problem here is that uh, personally, I wasn't properly vetted. I honestly thought that I was going to be on the other side of this because the majority of my content is on the other side. Yeah, and, and it, wasn't, I it wasn't specifically stated to me that I was going to be in the no position. I'm being dead ass with you. Understood. So, well, yeah, I'm going, me, going to Andrew, the best I, can. I would like to ask you this. So radical coder, right. when you talk about Andrew Tate and, you know, uh, organizations like MGTOW, these aren't support organizations for men. They are a response, a reactionary group to the status of what's happening to men. That what they're doing yeah, is abandoning, they're abandoning virtue. They're abandoning masculine virtue. They're abandoning families. I can give you an example of this. Go on my Twitter and you'll see a guy I follow named Sandman. I've been listening to him for years in the MGTOW community uh, for years. Not everything the MGTOW community says is incorrect because they rightly point out much of the time how much men are treated like shit. I disagree with them because they have no virtues whatsoever. And I've well, success. Hang on, hang on. And I've successfully argued this multiple times in the Red Pill community. I have a series of debates with the DGENs. I've won every single one of them because sure. of this. Now, the, when we're talking about the virtues, understand this is a reaction to what's currently happening to men. This is not a support network for them. It's something that is – Andrew Tate is a reaction. All of these things are reactions, not support groups that were designed to help men, but rather reactionary groups that spontaneously sprung up because they're so pissed off about how they're treated in society. That's why their gravitation goes that and way. Bad men and dangerous. Sure. I, and I, I agree with uh, the sentiment about how these, these groups can radicalize men and things like this. And they're not necessarily designed. We can contrast them to the support groups that Rachel mentioned, which exist in response uh, to a historic discrimination towards women, right? So these affirmative action programs and these types of things that are disproportionate. Yeah, you remember my open? Women. You remember my open? They've been, sure. a, a, women have been oppressed for 8 billion years and that'll end up Well, being I mean, like argument. like women literally- like, Come I, I on, dude, come on. You can on. meme about it, you can meme about it, but it doesn't, the, make, the, it doesn't make it not true. It doesn't make it not true to me about it. Answer to the reactionary portion so, for, so of to, to the reactionary portion, I don't 
necessarily like when I hear Andrew Tate or all these people, besides the like, uh, besides the specific value of like uh, one woman or, or versus like uh, having a haram or, or a harem of women, right? Um, besides that one specific value, I think a lot of these things, a lot of the things that like Andrew's like criticized for saying, these are like really classic patriarchal values that people have been saying for fucking hundreds of years and he's just saying now and they sound more shocking now because there's been a bigger push towards a, or a bigger push because progressives things. have done everything possible to devalue masculinity and the virtues no, no, of but, men but the, but it's the become a reaction like where says, if are also a person where if a man even expresses traditional masculine values people gravitate towards that even if the man's a shitbag even if he's a horrible shitbag i came out against andrew tate from the very beginning and said this Raven. is not a virtuous man You're like a feminist he's not saying virtuous things no now, it's the opposition to feminism it's um, virtue yeah, you understand the difference yeah. do you know what a, do you what's a virtue I think, I think it's grossly affected us politically too we could probably go back and forth in fact i have enjoyed this debate on our men ignored slash unappreciated today However, we are about to move into the Q&A section. However, before we do that, I would like to ask each of our interlocutors if you would like to tell everyone wh where and what you got going on on the interwebs and then your final thought on the topic. The floor is yours, whoever picks it up next. Can I go first? Um, so I am not your everyday Ashley XOXO. I have Apparently YouTube. not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can find me there, not your everyday Ashley XOXO. Um, I just, I, I really don't give a shit about most of this, um, but I do want to say, Rachel, uh, you have very good taste. Your outfit is just killing it tonight. Uh, I, lo I love the hairdo. We did uh, not dress like twins on purpose. Yes, we did. We're being, we were texting before this stream, even sending pictures back and forth. Um, Andrew, it was a pleasure to meet you. You you are a little bit insufferable, but I'm not gonna lie, I had fun. You guys, you guys are a lot of fun. And uh, sorry, not sorry for calling you a bitch, but a little sorry. It, it'd be like that sometimes. All it right, do. it do be like that. It do. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm Ryan, radical coder. Uh, I have, I, I have a lot going on. I, I like teaching coding and politics, or I talk about politics. I teach coding and mathematics and things like this. Um, and, and, uh, I wanted to real quick touch on the CRT thing. Cause we just had something happen in Florida, um, where Ron DeSantis is like banned an AP African-American history class, uh, on the basis of it being critical race theory. Uh, so, you know, he's literally like banning black history, uh, which, uh, which is something people should probably start paying attention to. Um, but more to, uh, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I like talking about a lot of different things, but unfortunately, there's this massive culture war being waged by the right because they don't have any policies, they don't have any uh, actual interesting things going on in, in 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 terms of that. So if you look at the GOP platform, it's pretty boring, pretty disgusting, doesn't really have much going for it. So they have to they have to wage war on these culture issues. They have to put men versus women. They have to do all this stuff, which is why I was very uncomfortable taking a, a hard no rigid position instead of like opening a discussion about the issues that men and women face in society and trying to go through all the different bullet points that Andrew hammered out at the beginning and which I thought would be interesting if we could walk through them one by one and talk about them but that's obviously not what we were here for uh and i guess i'll leave it at that you can subscribe to me uh radical coder on youtube uh we got a lot coming in the pipeline uh so uh stay tuned holy adderall batman okay Based. my name's rachel wilson i have a book you can find on amazon it is called occult feminism the secret history of women's liberation i am launching my own show january 26th it will just be rachel wilson on youtube um, you can also see me next Wednesday on Jay Dyer's YouTube channel, which is like, I'm super excited for that big Jay Dyer fan. Um, and I do a lot of debates on this sort of topic and it is very important to me. Um, so I was happy to be here. And my closing thoughts are just that, you know, if we look at the statistics, if we look at a number of examples, it's pretty clear that there's a big imbalance in power now between men and women. Women are pretty unequivocally privileged in society. Men are disprivileged. And it's all based on this false assumption that there was a patriarchy that oppressed women throughout history until the last hundred years, which is not true. If you buy my book, I detail the entire history of the last several thousand years. So uh, if you're into that, go ahead and go to Amazon and find my book. What's the name of your book again? Sorry. It's called Occult Feminism, The Secret History of Women's Liberation.
That'd be my turn now. My name is Andrew Wilson. I am the host of the one and only Crucible, one of the finest debate channels that has ever existed in the history of the Internet. It's also the fastest growing. Do work with other debate channels like Modern Day Debate, which I recommend and push people towards all the time because I'm just that benevolent. Uh, a couple of things that I wanted to close with real quick. Understand that our opponents really had no argument. We started with a conspiracy theory from Radical Coder, which was that there was uh, some type of um, background noise, which uh, alluded to me somehow. You know, I mean, it, it, you can shake your head, but this whole debate has been thematic in the I didn't even know what I was here to argue, which is very bizarre to me. And doesn't seem like the standard that James puts down on his 100,000 subscriber channel. Just saying. It's odd to me. It sounds very tinfoil hat-ish and conspiratorial. Now, uh, more than that, to address many of these arguments, there weren't very many made. But the few that were made were, of course, by the man, Radical Coder. If you can call him such. He talked about reactionary groups. Claim those reactionary groups were somehow a support network for men who were ostracized rather than being a condition of men who are ostracized, making them gravitating towards them because there's nothing else for them. When we got into talking about the division of groups, they agree with us. In fact, largely they agree with us on almost every single thing we say. They just have caveats and try to put it through some type of progressive prism, especially radical coder. But he has such bad ADHD and he spurgs so much, it's actually hard to keep track of his own arguments. Now, I don't hate Ryan. We've Me and Ryan have engaged many times, even on Discord, privately. He's always been decent with me. I clown on him a bit and he knows I'm going to clown on him a bit. He tries to do it back. It's funny. Okay. Uh, like the, the opening, you know, you're gay, which I stand by. It has nothing to do with trying to beat up on homosexuals. That's not ever even what okay. gay or when, when, when a guy calls another guy gay, they don't mean that when they call him like the F slur, they don't actually mean anything disparaging towards homosexuals and fucking the thing drives me the most crazy about it is like you guys know that shit you know it you've been on all the discords you know that they don't call people that shit because they actually think they're gay and i wish we would just stop pretending lack of argument from the other side we won handily we won right in the intro just like i predicted we won right after our opening statements just like i said we would we're fucking awesome we dominated you we win. So from there, I'll hand the floor back to the name on my end is still James Coons, right? Uh, I know it's not. Welcome to Modern Day Debate. The floor is yours. Had a little bit of a transition. We all wake up. Uh, sending love out there to James Coons and Kaz and all of the moderators out there like Hannah and Sideshow and Surgeon, everyone. But with that, I do want to remind you all that all four of our interlocutors links are in the description below. And so if you liked what you heard tonight, you can go find more. But with that, we are going to head over to the q a section starting with thunderstorm for ten dollars men and certain women are being treated horribly in capitalist bolshevik society because they are pulled away from their ethnicity a community culture by the state capitalist bolshevik society I'm not but sure if they're insulting. There is, to, to caveat it, though, there is some truth to what's being said. There needs to be at least some type of cultural homogeny that happens in order for people to even get along. I mean, we have to at least be able to speak the same language. We have to have at least some of the same base values. This is extremely important. It's something that's glossed over. Even Ryan, when he's pressed, wouldn't be able to disagree with that. He just thinks that the status quo is fine. And everybody integrates just fine. And even more would probably be fine. But it is important to understand that cultural integration is important regardless of capitalism or communism. It can't be done. Even Bosch would tell you this is true. 
I'm just um, curious about, I was just curious about the phrasing because my second book, which is coming out later this year is actually about the Bolsheviks and they were not capitalist. They were funded by capitalists, however, which a lot of people don't know, but I, I'm a little bit confused about the phrasing on that. So I'll just go with what Andrew said. I just wanted to say that I am way too stupid to answer that question. I just wanted to say that I completely agree with you. And yeah. I, so, okay. what, if, what can I answer? I didn't Absolutely. get to answer the question. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I would agree that like there are capitalist capitalistic forces that like devalue both men and women uh, in a lot of different ways. I don't think that the solution to that is it involves like uh, organizing people based on their ethnicity in any way. Uh, I think that's. Uh, I think it's more. Um, uh, I think the problem therein lies with uh, is is a, a conflict. Uh, between people who are undervaluing like workers for them and those workers wanting to you know survive and feed themselves and feed the people around them take care of the people around them and are being uh, in many cases uh, pretty deeply exploited by uh, by their employers but uh, uh, I don't think that they, this is like an ethnicity thing I'll agree with Andrew that like uh, there's some basis of communication is really important um, that doesn't mean that we need like a national language or anything like this I think it's really valuable to have people speaking different languages uh, and I don't think that uh, people speaking different languages means that there's no way to communicate Obviously, yeah, I mean, I wish we some... could come back for that debate. <laughs> it's... Yeah, sure. Obviously, obviously, people can uh, people can bridge that gap. Um, people can find uh, like obviously, you can learn some of each language. But, like um, people who live near a lot of immigrants tend to pick up a lot of uh, a lot of language from those immigrants as well. Um, so I think that's uh, something that uh, is valuable. Thank you for that super chat thunderstorm and that answer interlocutors and a $10 super chat from experiments in prebiotic chemistry. Thank you, Rachel, for your presentation. You are awesome. Love ya. Got a fan out there. Now, hang Thank on, hang you. on. That was directed <laughs> towards Rachel and not Ashley. So see <laughs> Ashley. See, you deserve it. Deserve it. And I'm sending love to all of our interlocutors as we move forward <laughs> to Ozzy, gold member for two months, three for extra juicy. Thank you so very much. Uh, who ordered the Ego Festival? Uh-oh, the spice is real. Send in love, Ozzy, though. Fair enough. James, James would say juicy. Jay right. juicy. 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 Right. Yes, juicy fruitsy. Right? That's, uh, that's James's thing. Mm -hmm. Um... So thank you so very much, Ozzy Gold. Send in love right back, and thank you for being a member. $5 super chat from Reason. Radical coder, grow up and just answer. Stop being a child. I think this was to the the is ought thing at the beginning, which uh, I, I wanted Andrew to just kind of get to the point, um, because I he was doing like a like a meme thing where he walks me up to the point, and I just asked him to, to just make his point, and he didn't want See to, so... Well, just so you under guys understand, if I had been asked that question by any of my opponents, I would have given an answer because I understand mm -hmm. basic philosophy. But that's just me. Okay. Just now me. On, when I do hear that, I will know. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat and the responses. Two dollars from Tim Zilmich. Ashley is having a blonde moment. Several. Agreed. We agree. We 100%. Look, the yes side and the no side can all come together on this one fact. And I am just sending love out there. Thank you for your responses. And a, another membership chat sent in from Coffee Mom. Thank you so very much for your support. Oppression of men started when women got rights. Uh, well, was no. Was there a it's, question mark there? Yes, yeah, there yeah, was a so question it's, mark. It's actually, it's actually a far more complex thing than this. It's what you do with what you're given, and we've seen what happens with this detrimental and horrific experiment when what is considered the patriarchy, which is what the entire world operates off of by necessity, because only Men can do the things that requ are required to keep society running, are then systematically oppressed by what Radical Coper would call the minoritization of those men, even by the majority, which are women, which is this is exactly our point from the very beginning. 
which is, look, just because you say uh, or try to make this correlate, oh, women got rights and then things went downhill. Well, kind of. Yeah, that's I mean, that's pretty much true. But this is because they use those rights in an oppressive way to deterministically go after the male infrastructure of which they rely to exist. I think that I think that the initial premise or idea of feminism, which is just equal rights for all, was a beautiful one. And I think that I, I don't believe in repealing the 19th Amendment or any of that bullshit. But I do think that modern day feminism has perverted and twisted uh, I don't I don't think that these modern day feminists want equality. I think that they want superiority. Um, and, and that in and of itself is is just it's it's another cycle starting all over again. And I think everyone needs to pull their head out of their asses. Well, I would agree with Ashley on the last part of what she said, but I'm completely <laughs> against first wave feminism as well, because if you go back to the suffrage movement, there were actually much higher levels of membership in anti-suffrage women's groups um, in around the turn of the century than there were pro-suffrage groups. And a lot of those groups put out pamphlets, posters, stating the reasons that they didn't want to be involved in politics, so the reason that they didn't want the vote. And some of the best uh, reasons for that, in my opinion, were they did not want their homes divided. They could foresee that if you gave women the vote, there would be women voting for safety, protection, be nice, right? And then there would be men voting for productivity, uh, less taxation, and things of that nature. They also said, why give us the vote when we are not capable of defending the homeland? It's not something we can do, so why give us this responsibility? Um, they had a lot of really sound reasons for not wanting to have to be involved in politics and having to have political power when they felt that the family unit was the most important thing. So I think that uh, even first wave feminism was not only a bad move, but it was a lot of the suffrage suffragettes were occultists. They were fortune tellers. Uh, they were fraudsters. They were uh, con artists, basically. So if you go read my book, you can read all about who they were and what they did. Yeah. So um, I guess, first of all, to, to what Rachel was saying, uh, thank God in America, it's not illegal not to vote. So uh, women who don't want women's suffrage, uh, go ahead, please don't vote. I, I We probably don't want your votes. Uh, so that's that's totally fine. You don't have to. Um, I do think there is something funny about um, wanting to give up like the responsibility that you might have to society to like let your voice be heard, uh, wanting to kind of like let things be as they are. Um, and and like a lot of women not wanting to have have involvement with that. Um, I, you know, I, I'm a little bit sympathetic to that. Like maybe it would be nice to live in a world where uh, things just kind of work out around you. Um, but uh, we never really lived in that world. That world's never existed for most people. Um, I think, uh, again, like we talked about, like the traditional family structure and how that never that was kind of a, a privilege uh, uh, for a lot of people. It didn't necessarily exist, uh, especially at the lower class. It was definitely not for um, for for like uh, black women or native people. And uh, like, uh, Brian, like a lot you of and I is... should debate that. That should be our next. Sure. Debate oh, wait, on wait. I just wanted to respond to the super chat real quick. Not only that, uh, Andrew, but since it I... was your super. Uh, well, you can respond radically after, but it'll, it does it, have it, to it, end it, on the yes. It'll side be super it quick. Oh, it'll no, be super good. quick. Go ahead, I promise. So imagine being so stupid that out of the first side of your mouth, you say that women shouldn't vote if they don't want to. And then out of the other side of the mouth saying, I can't imagine you abandoning your duty to vote. This is no, so I said tip. I can't. I can't imagine. No, no. You said you couldn't. You, you I can't, no, can't really I, imagine I I can that you would abandon it. your actual duty. I said to I do can that, sympathize But with if it. you are people who I are, you can did. sympathize with it. There's a big you difference between how you're framing it. Between what you just said, it's unimaginable to me that you're that dense and that stupid that you would say the one thing and then give the propaganda for why they should out of the other side of your mouth. It's insane. Yeah, so the women who don't, the women who don't want to vote, should not, should not vote to stop other women from voting. That's my point. To be clear, why shouldn't they? You, dis you discourage what? women who don't want <laughs> don't to be involved in politics. And on that, you disparaged them. So I'll disparage you. <laughs> well, on poorly, poorly. Maybe. On the opposite, for a $5 super chat from Experiments in Prebiotic Chemistry, Rachel, do you have a Patreon? I would love to donate. I do have a Patreon. Um, I don't do a lot on there. You'd be better off going to my, my Substack and subscribing to that as a paid subscriber. I think I'm going to 
move everything from Patreon over to Substack. So thank you so much for your support and your patronage. But yes, go to rwilson.substack.com. And that's where I'm posting all my writing and everything now. So she has my Thanks. patriarchal last name, by the way. It's terrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrific. But somehow she gets through the day. Thank you for your super chat and the response. A $10 super chat from Melody. Kate, I don't want to support such anger and hatred by supporting this particular type of rage. This was not a debate. I want to support the channel and Amy. Send in love and support right back at you, Melody. But for, I thought it was a good debate for what I will say. I agree with Super Chatter and the interlocutors, which, yes. <laughs> and Going Love, a $2 Super Chat for Radical Coder at When You Kiss oh, a Woman. <laughs> what? You're wondering the last if the last woman you kiss name was Chuck. That's what the super chat was. Again, Andrew disparaging me for allegedly being gay. I, I didn't promise. disparage I you. I, I asked you a simple question. I pro well, he, I mean, he, you're saying they're saying that I kissed someone named Chuck, and you're laughing about it because you think it's funny, right? You think it's funny? To yeah, I do think I'm it's funny. Gay. I think it's um, funny. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know what the Chuck. question is. I, I don't know the question actually. Come is. on, Ashley, it's funny. You would say it to him because I mean, come on. If we I, were all at dinner and I said it to Radical I, Code, I, everybody would what's be laughing. And what was so the I'm question? gonna, and I'll be very specific because I saw uh, Dustin was sending. Uh, personal questions but this was a super okay. chat and we do love our super chatters for the support so for radical coder at when would you kiss a woman okay so i think they're asking like um like like are they asking i think the question is like about whether or not i would like like uh like jump forward and kiss like whether uh, not malfunctioning like... npc and just answer the question yeah, i'm Holy sorry shit. dude hey hey let me exist all right bro come on i kiss women when i feel that I have their consent. Doesn't mean I have to ask them person like word for word. Can I kiss you now? Like I'm not fucking stupid. Uh, and then you can read body language. You can understand uh, with a little bit of empathy. You can understand how people are feeling and whether or not they're interested in kissing you. I do think that a lot of men are a little presumptuous about when they try to kiss women, and a lot of men are under presumptuous. And there are you know both of these things exist. So people should be more conscious of how the people around them are feeling when they're making sexual advances. My consent. All morality boils down to consent, consent. is based. Amen. Ugh. It's terrible. I will. I'll debate you on that too, radical coder. Because boiling all morality down to consent is <laughs> so easy to defeat. I could defeat that with one arm tied behind my back in my sleep while drunk. But so let's. I would do only it. do that to you if you consented. And you have the last point because it was your question. And a two dollar super chat, radical coder. Oh, from Brandon, radical coder. What's your leet code score? Uh, honestly, I just started using leak code uh, recently. I actually kind of want to go through a bunch of that on stream. So uh, right now, let's let's say it's zero and uh, subscribe to my channel and we can do some leak code uh, live streams. I think that'll be fun. Thank you for the super chat and response. A five dollar super chat from Samar. Who is excited for the JF versus Ben Burgess? Make sure to like and follow Betas. Thank you so very much. For yeah, so by much. the way, just to comment on that, um, JF, I have a great relationship with him and uh, couldn't recommend watching that debate enough. Even though JF will come in with some neurological bullshit, it will be a lot of fun. Even I'm going to be tuning in for that. Right? Even I am. I like Ben. Thank you all for the support and send in love. That's definitely one you all should set your notification bells for. And another one from Samar. $10. Not a big Tate fan, but to all debaters, why do you think his message was spreading like wildfire before his deplatforming? Does misogyny really cover it? Well, um, I guess since nobody else jumped in, I'll jump in. Um, number one, I think that Andrew Tate was actually signal boosted by the establishment because he is helpful to their cause. He is promoting stuff like Islam, harems, uh, polygamy. Uh, it's not something that I don't believe that Andrew Tate was an organic uh 
phenomenon at all. And number two, I think that there's a lot of angry, disaffected incel type of men out there, which is what we've been talking about this whole debate, is the effects of disaffecting a large majority of the male population and then seeing what happens. So it's just like what happened, uh, you know, in a certain time period in Germany where it's like you have a horribly disaffected population and you can install any strong man and people will just flock to him. So I don't think he's virtuous. I don't think his message was good, but I think that we've created a horrible situation where somebody like Andrew Tate can be signal boosted and catch a lot of fire, unfortunately. And to add to this, right. recognize right. Well, that everybody's weakest. You sh exactly. I'm sorry. I just agree. Strike while the iron's hot. We yeah. were at a we were at a point of severe weakness um, in our country. You know, which again I think has to do with where I go into the voting. Like I really, I've heard I've heard previously Democratic leftist males say that they're purposely voting very right wing now, specifically because of modern day feminism. I've I've heard them say that. You know, that's and sad. I think that's that part really of sad. yeah. And that's part of the Andrew Tate phenomenon. Sorry. Well, let me, uh, no problem. Let me, uh, let me just kind of reaffirm uh, what the wife is saying. You can actually go, me and my co host, my current co host, Zen Shapiro, had a debate on this <laughs> on my friend Red Pill Gang TV's channel. Fantastic channel, by the way. Uh, on Andrew Tate at the beginning of the phenomenon. And at that time, I basically expressed that this was a reaction. And he would be a massive letdown. And I actually equated it to what happens when these Christian Protestant Megala preachers end up getting caught sucking a dick in a parking lot and how humiliating that is for the right wing and said that that would be the exact experience we would have with Andrew Tate. You can go there, Red Pill Gang TV's channel, and see that debate. It's posted on his channel so that you understand my wife's exactly right. He was a reaction and everybody was pushed by the establishment towards that reaction. Yep. Yeah, so I, I agree that Andrew was uh Andrew's popularity was a reaction. I don't I don't think he was like a plant uh or whatever there these guys are suggesting this kind of conspiracy minded thing. Um I think says the, the guy reaction... who thinks that a debate host yeah, is a yeah. conspiracy so, so, um, is, is engaged in yeah, a conspiracy. The, the loaded topic is a different thing. Um but uh to, to Andrew Tate point specifically, uh I think that a lot of the rhetoric around the rise of or the impact of feminism is centered around saying that it really uh or, or treating it as if it demonizes men a lot more than it really does fundamentally. Fundamentally. And so when men are receiving this message that they're uh, that feminism hates them, that women hate them, not really from women so much as other men who are feeding into this idea. Uh, I think that it when some guy comes along, he's telling them self-improvement advice, but he combines it with a lot of misogynistic stuff and he combines it with a lot of things that are anti-feminist. These guys are going to be attracted to that kind of thing because they feel as if feminists all hate them. Feminists don't hate you. Intersectional feminists are mo probably most people who identify as feminists are intersectional feminists and they don't hate you. They don't want you to be miserable. They want the best for more people they want equality for people of all races all genders all, all sexualities uh all of these things and they want people to be recognized uh they, they want specifically the, the impacts of all of these things on their lives oh to be bullshit well. yeah, it's all bullshit it's all bullshit, after sure. traditional feminists yeah. like jk rowling because she says that everything that women fought for were complete was completely and totally I'm not destroyed. Be JK Rowling. Yeah, well, of course you're not. Of course you we don't. Do that later. I mean, I will. I will another Rowling, time, but not yeah. right now. Like I, on my channel I'm before, for. where I I I disagree with you vehemently that there's there aren't more political conspiracies going on. You always, always, always take the well. You should vote to get not. those people out of power. Then you should make sure you're voting. Just uh, vote harder, you guys. Vote harder, bro. Just vote harder. Oh yeah, bro. oh yeah. Vote, <laughs> vote harder. Get more people who vote are voting harder, for candidates fix support. Amen. Stop you trying to fix tell it people with not voting. To vote. People who listen to you I guys should you, not vote. Fair and this is why I think you're gay, Coder. This is why. Care. This is what I mean by that. But, well, okay. you made a nice, can't help but use that word again, transitionary statement because Black Silver for $5. And I will say after this, we only have a few more super chats and one or two chats left and so if you have your burning desire question for one of all of our debaters please send them in now because we will be wrapping up however five dollars from black silver would radical coder fist fight andrew to prove himself not gay i will do it with one hand tied behind my back i will give you the beardson beardly challenge if you'll show up with your dork glasses 
and get stopped on in front of cameras, I will happily raise the funds. Coder, when would you like to do this? I like and your so, class, Brian. Thank you, Ashley. So I don't hinge my masculinity on whether or not I could beat up Andrew. Uh, I don't. I'm not really interested. I'm a lover, not a fighter. So yeah, but I uh, want, that's not what I'm here for. I, well, please, okay, come you on. want to beat me up? I, that, I think that's kind of uh, sad. Um, no fun. But, you know, no I, fun. I'm just living my life. You know? Think about. Hang on, hang on. What if we gave all of the money? that was raised to some like fucking transgender charity bullshit right then you would show up and take your woman wow. right uh no I'm, I'm good no still not okay yeah no I, i'm not gonna go, think about go all, the, no think about all the trans kids that and you could benefit though i, I just want to put on okay. an asterisk that all fist fights on modern day debate are done digitally based yeah. Yes, and so, uh, sending love. Thank you so very much, Black Silver, and your responses, guys. And nine dollars from Samar again. Thank you so very much for the support to the women on the panel. Would you trade your current day political say for a more structured traditional lifestyle? Why or why not? What exactly is valuable about your position foundationally? Either one I would first. like Ashley to go first. Um, well, I would give my left arm um, to be able to be married to my husband again and be back in my family home with my children and my husband all together cohesively. I would. Um, even if that meant giving up my rights. Yes, I would absolutely do that in a heartbeat. I miss it very much. Um, having said that, it isn't a possibility for me. And so this is my life now. And um, at this point, there is nothing for me to give up. Um, there's no rights for me to give up. Um, so, so no, if that scenario could never happen again, then I'm happy to, to continue living life as it is and fighting the good fight. Damn, Ashley just took the wind out of my sails. Actually, no, she's what she just said is the reason that I do what I do. It's because most women would say that, right? Uh, we've been propagandized for a hundred years with this boss bitch, go girl, strong woman stuff. And most of us really deep down, and I know this because after a year of having my book out and having received dozens of messages, emails, DMs, even letters in the mail from women around the world, like South Africa, Europe, uh, Canada, the United States, of women just saying that what they really want is to be moms and to have an intact family and be with their children and have a healthy, good, happy marriage and this stable life for raising their family. That's really what they want, but they don't feel like they can say that because it's kind of looked down on as like you're weak or you couldn't hack it in the career world or like, you know, there's something wrong with you. You must be like low class if you're not like a CEO, Beyonce, you know, sexy boss bitch or whatever. Right. Um, and I think that just like a hundred years ago, when we look at what women were saying at the turn of the century, that's really what most of us want. We don't really want like some corner office jet setting fly to Paris to close the business deal type of life. Most of us really would choose our children and our families. Um, and that doesn't mean you can't do other things in your life. Like my oldest daughter's 22 now. I'm old now, right? Like my youngest is already in her double digit ages and like doesn't need me constantly anymore. So I can do things like write a book. I can do things like these debates. Women have a lot of different phases in their life to think about. So do I think it was a good trade that we gave up family security, that we gave up marital security, that we gave up like our worth as women and our sexuality, like for the purpose of reproduction and, and, and all of that for this, like promise of being a Beyonce when 99% of us are never going to be that we're going to be waitresses. We're going to be secretaries. You know, we're going to be like working in administrative job. No, I don't think it was a fair trade at all. I think it was a Faustian deal. I think it was a terrible bargain for us. I think that women have suffered the most because of it, of anyone, even though we're here talking about how unfair it is to men. I think women have suffered tremendously because of this. And so, yeah, I would 100% give up like some arbitrary right to vote, whatever that means. Um, I would in order to have that back. Yeah, I totally would. I would. 
I would if it meant having okay. my Okay, so gay yeah. radical coper, what do you have to say to that? The women on the panel are both in agreement, even though they're in opposition. No one's stopping them from being, I mean, like, sure, uh, Ashley's specific scenario, like, like Ashley, I don't think Ashley blames the 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 uh, her, the her problems in her marriage on, on feminism. Um, I don't think feminism is a reason that uh, women are, are in, like, or I, I don't think that, like, feminists if are I, telling women not back, to be if moms. I could go, like, I think that's, that's if okay. If I could like, go back in moms. time, I would yeah. do things differently. I would yeah. be more of a server, uh, more of a wife than I was. Sure. And, and that's okay. That's, I mean, if that's, if that's Ryan, the role that you want, hang on, Rachel, you hang on, Rachel, real quick. Please, 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 can, you, can you, uh, wait for sure, a second? Go ahead. Um, like right. if that's the life that you want to live, that's the role that you want to fill, fill, that's right. totally fine. Right. I don't think you should be stopped from doing that. However, I don't right. think that any part of that suggests that if somebody doesn't want to fill that role, that they should be pushed into that role by any means. Right. Okay. Ryan, part of a big part of what my book is about is that this myth that women weren't allowed to ever do anything it is exactly that it's a myth. Prior to women's liberation, there were women who owned property, owned businesses, inherited land, um, had their own money. The women were allowed to do lots of things. We And I have several examples in the book of that exact thing. So this, uh, the reason the history has been rewritten is because gender studies departments call this standpoint feminism. And they will tell you straight out that they've rewritten history from the standpoint of an oppressed woman. So it's almost like, like critical race theory. It is. It's exactly like <laughs> that's that. Not, it's that's it's not called theory. standpoint <laughs> theory. And so they've rewritten the history to make it to make people feel like women have just been historically chained to a stove and forced to give birth and had no rights. That's not real. That's not true. That's not how things were. And so for you to sit there and say like, oh, well, you can still do that if you want to. Yeah, I guess. But. How are, are you doing women, it? Don't you do these how things? How are women like Ashley and I supposed to swim upstream against the entire social current? We've got Cardi B, Taylor Swift, Rachel, Megan what, Stallion, what, Beyonce. What do you want to do that you're not able to do because of feminism? What what do you want to do that you're not able to do? I will tell you. Stop malfunctioning. Oh, oh, I'm very clear. Oh, stop malfunctioning. You can't do because of feminism. Name one Stop malfunctioning. Ryan, if you be quiet, I will. So you women are naturally inclined to be in group. Right. I'm not talking about women. Talk about you. What are you blocked from doing because of feminism? Name I one can, fucking thing. I, I can answer that actually. I am I well, go ahead. Well, I, I, and then Rachel, know, it sounds like Rachel is actually giving the floor over to oh. Ashley. So that sounds yeah, good. So actually it's all good. And same So yeah, I Rachel. think that probably part of modern day feminism has made it so much easier to walk away from a marriage. I think that if things were more traditional and uh, you know, good old good old fashion like the way it was I don't think that my husband would have had the choice you know to get a divorce and I think that after so many years of being married you turn into different people and I think I genuinely believe that he could have found a way to be happy we both could have worked through that and found a way to be happy I think that also I was confused a lot by what maybe what I felt like I should be doing and maybe I didn't quite feel as feel as fulfilled in my motherly or wifely duties as I, I otherwise would have been by kind of what part, part of what you're saying, Rachel. So I can see how it's a double-edged sword for sure. Yeah. Pretty yeah, fucking base. Can Rachel, can, base. can Rachel answer the question though? Yes, what what is stopping, stopping you from question. doing? Ryan, so we're not talking about like legal restriction. We're talking about social norms. So when you okay. sit here and talk about transgender people feeling like they're rejected, feeling that's why they have higher suicide rates, higher depression rates, because they feel Social pressure. Well, usually right? feelings are involved in suicide, right. but you're not. It's why are you same, like so? so it's the same he's thing. not diverting. Let her answer. You asked. I hope so. You okay. asked. If you will let me talk, the reason it's because intense social pressure, and I'm saying this as a woman, right? I grew up as a smart kid. I was always in the advanced classes. I was always put in like the uh, advanced smart kid classes, and it was like expected that I had to go to college. I had to get a degree. I had to have a job. And so when I decided I don't want to do that, I want, you know, I had my first baby at 20 and I was like, I want to stay home and be with my kids and have a family. I was shamed. I was dis I was discouraged from doing that. I had intense pressure from family, from friends and from society at large saying that makes you weak. It makes you vulnerable. It means you're a loser. It means that you are wasting your potential, right? So there's this intense pressure women feel 
from society at large that we have to be boss bitches. If you're not Beyonce, you ain't shit. If Are you you're not a boss bitch, well, what's well, that? Are you not a boss bitch? Still? I'm not at all. So <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, you're, you're gonna like say like buy my He's book, you know? Bitch. I'm like I go you're on Fox make News. A, like, yes, I, I wrote a book. How do you think I wrote a book? Bad. Hey, so like, I'm gonna Coder. interrupt all Coder. of you. Hey, I, I gotta ask us one question, Coder. Yeah. So you nothing tell, was stopping you. Tell you tell me right? what you think my wife should make me for breakfast in the morning. This what? I don't give bitch. a shit what you eat for breakfast. But right. she's still well, so, so she's obviously thing, doing no, all the things that she wants bitch. to do. At the end because of the day, she, she has a permission all. slip from me. Because my Again, husband because she wants to do all the things she wants to do, right? Okay. I agree cool. With so the cool. So people can so so women who want to do what you're doing, if they can find a husband who wants to be in that position as well, they can make that work. And sometimes it won't work. And I'm sorry, that happens as well. But no, but you are not being forced out of that. Not even saying anything. So, okay. Okay. okay, well, cool. Right, I, I, Rachel I, 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 I agree, and Andrew, but... if you had any final comment, but then Radical, you have to make a comment that isn't a question. So one of you has to make not a question. Oh, yeah, yeah, it. absolutely. The trad lifestyle is based and awesome. We need to get back to it as quickly as possible. Radical Coder's wrong about everything he says. Radical, That's my final Radical comment. Radical Coder, you have the final statement. Sure. Plenty of that. people will want to live in that in those roles, plenty of people want to fulfill those roles. Plenty of people don't want to fulfill those roles. And it's very important that we leave room for both of these things to exist. And on that, we have three super chats and two chats left. So if you don't send a super chat in now, it is not being in. Got to get him in. Got to get him in, guys. Got to get him chats. in. Woo and we want to thank once again our interlocutors for joining us, all of the community and the super chats and members out there. Uh, Mo Bash, I'm going to say this one earlier, so if I get it wrong, you can tell me. Uh, sending in love, he says, S U as lol. S U as lol. I, I, don't, I don't know what that means, but I do appreciate you sending in the super chats, even to MDD. Um, there's a common misperception that we're competitors. We actually work hand in hand together. Um, and those super chats actually help support James's channel. I know I've talked with him many times. So me and my wife greatly appreciate you sending those in, even if they're unintelligible and we don't even fucking know what you're talking about. We still like appreciate them. You know what I mean? Indeed. In fact, if we do you wrong, please always send me tag me at Amy Newman. Once again, it's S U at, uh, Maybe it was the S. Ass, S, you asshole. Ah, uh, you see, I feel like it was the S I was missing on there. Sending love in for the Super Chats and Prestige Worldwide. Uh, World, wait, hang on, hang on. Got to say it right. Prestige Worldwide. 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 That's how that goes. And I will say we have one, basically, Andrew, you have one, a pro and a con. So you, you got it both ways. Hang in there, Andrew. Debating two women is grating. It's rough. <laughs> but luckily, I have a fantastic woman on my side to help me take these females on. Well, thank and, you. Yeah, you, you. Well, <laughs> actually, you know, that's a good point. I have three women here who got my back. Right. So I can I can do these things. I can do these great feats. Right. As I'm happy well, to do three V one as well. The head all. of the patriarchy should be doing that. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. And I'm going to send love out to Prestige Worldwide and then Beamsy Worldwide for Andrew. Is your approach to all debates with ad hominems and insults your way to discredit yourself and your position? Hey, he, she, they started it. Hey, they started it. You can't get mad at me because, look, if you want to take it to the mud, we'll take it to the mud. You saw when Ashley came correct and we started having a discussion. It was a good discussion, right? I give out exactly what I get. The second I hear some bullshit like, and your husband is the reason for that, you're going to get exactly what you uh, what you give. You want to go to the mud? Happy to slug it out there. You want to have high-tier intellectual philosophy debate? Let's do that, too. To I love fair, doing all of this shit. You started it right off the bat. You set the tone. To be typical, fair. typical to woman. Be fair. I also like rolling in the mud. I don't mind, Andrew. I've, I've rolled in the mud with you many times, and I do it again, King. Yeah, I know, but that's because I give you a significant amount of clout because I'm awesome and you 
I have to grasp the coattails of my awesome Star Wars sweatshirt, which, by the, which, by the way, my we'll wife see. bought this for me, utilizing her own money because she knew that I love Star Wars. Can you believe what a great woman? One day, Radical Coder, such a woman if will only come I could be so lucky. into your life. Her name will be Steven. It'll be a fantastic experience for you. <laughs> Again, the joke is, by the way, the joke there, the punchline would be that I'm gay, right? Which he thinks it's not. Thing. Well, it's not a joke. <laughs> okay doubling down on the, the joke being that i'm gay which he thinks is bad and, and also he thinks being a woman is bad as we saw from the last super don't think being a woman's bad when he says gay okay. he just means that's great i gloves. have great respect for women who have great respect for men yeah exactly more send in love with aed 1799 from mo bash why do many skinny conservatives pretend to be masculine? Coder is younger and looks way healthier than Andrew Lull. Looks like he could take him down. See, let me respond to this first and then I'll hand it over to my illustrious. I have to pee so bad. And I brilliant <laughs> opposition who declined. Remember this, right? decline so you. while it is that you might say that unhealthy perception is he's a he's he drinks too much and he smokes too much he's still up for a one hand tied behind his back boxing match and remember the opposition fled not myself so before you, you start throwing stones remember who ran and who didn't just saying i i want to be clear that um i i never like offered to fight anybody. I never said that I like fighting. I never said that this is a position I want to be in. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's a, I think really that's a brilliant to response not. to yeah. the, to the super chat. Thank I'm you. not even shaming you. Yeah. I'm I, I, agreeing again, like with I said, you. <laughs> like I said, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Um, yeah. but I am a healthy fighter or a healthy just lover. Just for the me. chat, because I keep seeing this in the chat and maybe the demographic of the channel is younger. We're fucking old. We have adult True. kids. We have kids that can drink legally in bars. Just saying. So if you're expecting us to be 22 and sexy, sorry, we're old. Hey, I'm 30 oh. and sexy. I'm 30, flirty, and thriving. All right. No, Is that you're a you're bear none. Mattress? Hang on, hang on. Is that a you're, bear mattress? You're none of those no, it's things. Not. It's just white sheets. You're none of those things. You suck in every way that no. I could possibly conceive of. The fact you're even okay. on here, you should be kissing James's ass. That he allowed you to come on here at all instead of tinfoil hat conspiring that he did something against you. Just saying. Uh, again, to the allegations that I'm saying that James is conspiring against me. I, I never said that. I, I don't even think I alluded to that. I do yeah, think did. that a lot of yeah, the topics on this. I do think that a lot of topics on this channel are uh, oriented towards a conservative narrative about Stop the world. Fucking and, about Stop fucking whining. Stop fucking whining and engage you can, you more. You're right, whining, here. You're whining you're right about here and you could have engaged whining, the whole time right? and instead and you spent I, I the whole thing I, whining And like again, a bitch. Uh, what I tried to do throughout this debate was go point by point through a lot of the things you guys brought up and I, I tried to have interesting dialogues about all of the the things that you hammered through because i the think these ass. are meaningful conversations and they're important conversations to be had however i do think it's interesting that it's all this the, the painting is all men versus women men men and women are at it they're all they <laughs> think it's each other interesting. It's, he's mean the narrative he's mean I think it's james silly. is mean he conspired i don't it's think evil. james i think james is a fine guy i like james you know i, I don't hate james i will debate yeah, him on you, what well, I said. why don't you send him a thank you email because you had no business Kelsey. being here you're not anywhere near our tier but, you, you, you're not anywhere near our tier james invited me James invited me. Yeah, okay. because, I have plenty of business. You know what? You know why? You know why he invited you? Because, because he, he knows knew, that I'm entertaining. It, well, that's it. And interesting. Right? But just just so you know, you should be thanking him because there would be no fucking way you would have a public debate with. I think everybody should thank and James my illustrious for inviting him on program. Sure, unless he had allowed you to be in here, and instead of you going out of your way to tinfoil hat him, send him an email saying thank you, James. I appreciate it so much. Do that for me, Cope. I will thank him, and I will remind him that I want to debate him about the neutrality, the alleged neutrality of the modern day debate champ. And on that note, I want to thank James. I want to thank our interlocutors and our panel. These are we have just three more questions left from Brandon. Can I be a stay at home cat dad and still be based? No, really? absolutely. No. no. Dad, your cat up. Come on, Ashley, Ashley, tell him no. Come on, do it. Just, just say no. 
Be, uh, you would have to have some type of funding. I mean, for sure. Uh, maybe start an OnlyFans, but not with your cat. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. And I'm sending in love to Enslave by Truth. I saw that. We were uh, waiting. These are our last two questions, and I think I uh, they're good for our last setting of the tone. Enslave by Truth for $2. The real true question of the night. Who wore it better, Ashley or Rachel? <laughs> and Rachel Metal has, Rachel has the Metallica t-shirt and even Radical Coder. Yeah, Can't Rachel, with that? Never, I, honestly, I, you look lovely. So I don't oh, know. thanks. That's super I, nice of you. I'm you an old lady. Great. I'm old, and so you have to be nice to me. I'm like 42 years old, and I'm on the internet. So you guys have to. I'm on the internet. It's not on easy. the internet, and I'm old. I'm a boomer, according to my children. So, you know. <laughs> That's funny. I'm trying my best, okay? <laughs> and but, then, I mean, we did have a good laugh whenever we first cammed up and saw that we were dressed yeah, the same. Yeah, we were like, oh, no, we match. What the hell? <laughs> Like you definitely yeah. were planning that with text. You were saying exactly. Um, and with can that, I say, this can is I the last one. Oh no, absolutely. Quick second before before you do before you do that. Me and Rachel will host a Q and A on our channel. A lot of my chat has been asking as we've been co-streaming. We will of course do a Q and A. Answer all the super chats. We've always been this way. Uh, sorry to cut in, moderator. Oh, no. In fact, I will actually say if you, uh, any of our interlocutors, or just if you in the audience would like to run an after show, we on Modern Day Divorce support all after shows. Send us over the link. We'll try and get them in the description below, but we will always shill for everyone who's shilling for did us. You say, did you say Modern Day Divorce? Modern Day. I think oh, I said Modern said Day. Modern, day. <laughs> I sound like Modern Day Divorce. Oh, I'm just no. saying. It did. <laughs> Modern day divorce. Yeah, so James, you gotta you gotta have to get you're gonna have to get on him about that. Sorry. Done, yeah. done, done. Uh, so that I will also be continuing to stream. So if anyone wants to come hang out with the cool progressive. Nobody's the coming room. over there. Nobody's uh, coming maybe over not, there. You maybe suck. not, maybe not. Hey, you're hey, awful. If you want to, you might but want to you might want to get there on the ground you floor go. The Radical Coder. Radical Coder just started streaming about two weeks ago and we're going to the fucking moon. All right. But so there we soon. have it. We have both after shows for the affirmative and the negative side. So if you are looking for even more juicy debate on this topic. Go find those after shows. However, this is the last question from Day JB, and I will take, uh, will go everyone to have their turn at the answer. What are traditional masculine values exactly? Okay. Uh I'll take that one. I'll tell you what I think they are. So traditional masculinity, and this is important to me because I think the word patriarchy has been abused. I think it's been uh, turned into something it's not. And traditionally what masculinity was, was more like the chivalric code where men are have maximum responsibility. They were expected to give their lives for their family and for their country the way that Christ was expected to give his life for the church. Uh, men are supposed to be the protectors and the providers. They are supposed to be virtuous. Um, if you look at like the traditional Christian virtues, either through the Orthodox or the Catholic Church, which pretty much agree on what, you know, traditional virtues would be. That's what masculinity was supposed to be. It was supposed to be about self-sacrifice, protecting those weaker than you, defending those weaker than you, defending your family and your country. That's what traditional masculinity was supposed to be about. Um, to me, I, I would agree with Rachel that it's about protecting your family and protecting your country. That's a huge one to me. Um, if, if, and when, I mean, I haven't, you know, been, but when I was, when I was married, I very much so missed the feeling of, of a feeling protected and safe, um, valued, loved, you know, those are important too, but protect protection and safety is something that I didn't even realize um, that I had until it was gone. And so I, I definitely understand the value of that more so now that it's gone. I hate to say it, but it's true, um, you know, than I did before. Like just, I, it didn't matter what, it's almost like as a woman, it's almost like when you lived at home with your father or your mother, you know, and you felt safe. You felt like even if X, Y, or Z happens, 
I have, I have someone that's gonna, everything's gonna be okay. Like, I don't have to worry about keeping it all together, you know, because my husband will somehow make sure everything's okay. And that, that is probably what I guess I would define if I'm, if I'm looking at like a husband, that that's what I miss. That's, that's definitely masculine to me. Sure. I mean, I, I largely agree with a lot of these characteristics of masculinity, um, being able to provide, being able to support, um, and uh, generally being uh, just able to make the people around you feel good, safe and understood. Uh, and I think a lot of these things um, are not manifested by a lot of men. A lot of these things are. Um, and I think that a lot of the ways that these things manifest are unfortunately really harmful to men and the people around them. And a lot of men who don't live up to these things are really shamed um, in a lot of ways. Uh, that are unfortunate uh, and that we should be treating our men better uh, and, and our women better. Uh, and uh, yeah, so masculinity is, uh, it's not a bad thing. No one, even people who say like toxic masculinity, no one's talking about masculinity as a whole. I just want that to be very clear because so many people get this so, so skewed. Um, they're talking about the ways in which masculinity uh, manifests into toxic aspects uh, that harm, mm -hmm. pe that harm men and the people around them. Uh, and I think people should uh, engage with that more uh, because it's kind of a um, cowardly not to, uh, to just kind of wipe off people talking about toxic masculinity as if they hate masculinity. I think this is a very beta way of engaging with the topic. And a caveat to that, I, I just I wish that the family unit would would raise more traditionally masculine boys, and I think that that's really hard. Yes, to, so yeah. fucking base. I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, like, I think that another thing that's going on right now with the, the modern day feminist movement is that we are not raising traditional men, you know, and and that scares me for the future too. Um, it's sad, but that that's. All I had to say about that. So, Sorry. Holy shit! Ashley turned out to be based. Yeah. In so can I, can I can I respond to? Yeah. Uh, so to like this? honestly yeah. though, honestly, I want to give her a lot of credit for being yeah. so. Well, honest. actually, hang on. Let me yeah. let me respond. Usually, I would tie this in and say that all of you are wrong because none of you are speaking to virtue with masculine traits, and without virtue, there is no masculine trait. But I wanted to read you just very briefly, Ashley, for my response time. Some of the comments from my chat. Holy shit, Ashley's based. Pray for Ashley. We had Ashley wrong. Ashley's totally correct. Ashley does want to see the best for men. Ashley, some more prayers for you. Here's more prayers, Ashley. Ashley, the Christians have you come over to our side. We're That's all good. about the network. We're all about helping. And Ashley, you have proven yourself as being fucking based and epic at the end of this. We have changed your mind and we're so happy, Ashley. Sorry, that got to me. Oh, <laughs> nice. Thank you. Uh, it just br brought out more stuff than I thought it would tonight. <laughs> Good job, Ashley. We got you. And we I are you, on. I still love you, Brian. Hey, we are I mean, on your I, I don't side. think we disagreed all that much. Whole chat. Really Brian, did. shut up. Let her talk. Whole chat's <laughs> on yeah, your man, side. You're, you're the one on, talking over her. We're on your up. back. We've got your back. I can't. You got to go read all those comments. They're That's right really there for you. <laughs> and on that note, I want to just send love to all of our interlocutors and thank them along with our amazing mods and you, our audience, for joining us here tonight on Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral, nonpartisan platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more fantastic, may I say juicy, debates, we are now all over the internet, including your favorite podcasting platform. So if you enjoy the show, then please don't and forget fuck to you, Ryan. like, follow, <laughs> and subscribe. Hope and see you, Andrew. Sending so much love. It helps you, us Amy. reach an even wider audience. <laughs> so You're a lot of fun, Thank Amy. You. Uh, Thank you. So Thanks, all Amy. Of you, Thank you. <laughs> including tonight's debate, are <laughs> men ignored slash unappreciated today with our debaters, Andrew and Rachel and Radical Coder and Ashley, here to help us find that answer. Plus, if you like what any of our guests have said tonight, all of their links are in the description below, and it sounds like they're having after shows. BTW, have you checked out our new MDD 
TikTok. When we hit a thousand followers, we'll gain access to live streams straight to your phone. Finally, if you're looking for even more fun after the show, feel free to check out our MDD Discord as well. With that, I am Amy Newman with Modern Day Debate. We hope you continue having great conversations, discussions, and debates. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.